bump, 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 bump. We are live. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mike. I'm Jay. And together we form the crustiest giggy core. Cr I got it all wrong. The this Crack Shack. Show. That, that would be our band name. We, we, no, the, the Shack Crack. <laughs> the Shack Crack. See the, see the Crack Shacks tonight at the, at the, the Crack, crack Shacks. Shack. They own the so damn shack. good, it's going to leave you stinky and want none of it later on. It's just there's mediocre a, shit. There's literally, it's so shitty, there's a bug, there's a gnat flying around me right now. That's how bad we suck. Anticip there, yeah, an anticipation. I'm a murderer of insects. <laughs> oh, fuck. There's a, uh, there's a guy that knows the people next door, and we were at a birthday party the other day, and he's an insect ecologist, mm -hmm. um, which is someone who studies both vaginas and insects and no he's a he's an insect person i don't know what that means he went to school for anthropology like the guy in csi yeah. william he's Shanders, an, yeah he's an anthro yeah he's an anthropologist yeah 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 and there was a spider and he was like oh, i love spiders he looks and sounds just like travis barker by the way mm. from Blake too. it's weird like he doesn't dress like travis him. barker does look like a guy that would just be into insects for no fucking reason like if you're like if you like hanging totally. out with him like hey travis what, what are you into he's like i like to study bugs and shit yeah. And sometimes I, I eat them. That. It's good protein. It'd be soft spoken. They're like, I like to study bugs every once in a while. Yeah. And then you yeah. have like a whole collection of bugs on his wall. And like you take one day, it's like, stop, don't touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, he, dude, there's a spider on the ground. He just like put his hands out. He's like, oh, it's a little guy. Like put the spider in his hand. I was like, stop it. You're scaring me. He ha he owns like hissing cockroaches. He's a nice guy though. But, yeah. I, I watched the, um, I can't remember the channel's name, but he collects a bunch of tarantulas and shit and feeds them and shows feeding videos and how they water them and stuff. He's like obsessed with them. It's disgusting. But he talks to them like they're like puppies or something. He's like, don't be so aggressive. Don't be aggressive. <laughs> like he's trying to feed its water and it'll do like a snappy thing. And it'll be like, don't be aggressive. Oh, it's so aggressive. <laughs> it's so fast. He's a good boy. It was a good boy. Yeah, they love him. And they're, and they're fucking expensive too because he has to send out for them. He's got like, they, they call them old world spiders and new world spiders. And they're all like different types of venom. It's fun. And he's paying like three to $500 or more to get them shipped to him. It's insane. I bet he gets laid a lot. He does have a girlfriend, so good for him. Hey, she. I mean, I, who cares if she's Wednesday Adams? It doesn't mean shit. It's still a girl that he gets to cuddle up to at night. I bet that that does turn on a certain type of person. They're like, "Oh my god, you're not afraid of those snakes." Yeah, I want you to put your snake in me, and I want, I want your. Oh, if it's small, like I want your insect to rub all over me. Creepy crawly, oh, tiny hands. Uh, pocket monsters. That that was a game. Um. Little monsters, oh, but, pocket monsters. Oh yeah, pocket, okay. and then there, uh, yeah, pocket monsters. Isn't that what you call your wiener? Yes. Oh, that's yes. the one-eyed dragon, or the one-eyed snake, or the, or the, the old dragon tuck and roll, the dragon beast of Mount Vesuvius. <laughs> if you're trying to be a little bit fancy about it, I don't call my wiener anything. You know why? Because I tuck it back. I call it, I call mine little J. Uh, little little J. J. Little like with an L, like a rapper. Nah, it's just little. I just call it little. Little, no, little it's just drink. like a cutesy because it's a cutesy, it's not big or anything, it's just cutesy, yeah, yeah, I know, but it tastes good, and that's what's Thanks, important. Man. Appreciate that. You're welcome. You're I welcome. try my best. Uh, by the way, I was gonna say, I did you watch? I'm pretty sure you didn't, uh, but the they had the PlayStation 5 showcase today, like they were showing all their new games and shit coming out. I did not, I do not, Fuck know. Ian thought. is it good? Terrible. No, they it's all terrible. Started. Yeah, dude, everything was goddamn cartoony, except the only cool thing that they showed was Spider-Man 2 and then Final Fantasy 16, I think, and that was it. I did see a clip of the Spider-Man game because that that the it had the symbiote suit and it was like fucking good over. It here. looked badass. They they released like 12 minutes of game like gameplay. It looks fucking amazing. But other than that, yeah. like do everything else, it, it was all toon, like tune shit. Like it was, you know, how, like they do those anime cartoony fucking games. Yeah. Where it's like this is the one that has to go to the magical land of Bahatra. And get the stones <laughs> to stop the count from taking. I usually like those kind of games, but not in the style that they're doing them. So I, I was yeah. bored as fuck. It was it was terrible. I was like, I thought they were going to sweep it, like they were going to do amazing, and they didn't. I think there was one called Dynamo Dynamo Blade. <laughs> so it was all right. It's about a samurai warrior. <coughs> now that's what I call my dick, Dynamo Blade. That's not yeah. True. But I, well, and then I, there was another one that was like VR. They were also pushing like three VR games, like they're releasing Resident Evil Four for VR. The new oh, that's one because right, PlayStation has their own VR thing yeah. now, right? Yeah, but it's still the technology is not there. I, it looks like I don't know. It is what it is. 
Yeah, I just I, I saw the ad for I have an Oculus buried deep down somewhere around here, and I saw they have the football game for it. I really want to try it, but I'm yeah. sure it's not great, but I still want to try it. A few more years, a few more years, and that VR is going to catch up to us. We're all going to be mm -hmm. living in the simulation. We're all living in a simulation now. Don't you know? Didn't you know? Don't you know? Don't you know? Don't you know? I think um, there's a song in there. I just can't capture it with my heart. By the way, yeah. I was going to say this list we made tonight, dude, it was actually fucking harder than I thought. It was harder to find anything. Like, well, I that's what I I was scary. trying to pick stuff that scarred me. Like, actually, like made my crack shack explode like Mount Vesuvius. Like the <laughs> ones that really like the ones that stick with you. You know, the ones that like, like, like these top ten movies are. They're not the top ten greatest horror movies or anything like that. These are just movies that actually scared Mike and I. Like Ooh, our top ten that. movies that did it. Check it out. Are you guys ready for this? You reminded me of this. Are you ready for this? Get ready. Oh, that's fucking badass. We're like fucking C-SPAN. That's cool as shit, dude. It's How'd you do real. that? I I fashioned it out of wood. <laughs> <laughs> Old man carving canoe made of wood? <laughs> I, that's cool I as fuck, it dude. out of beech wood. <laughs> I hope that we get the update when uh, Ron DeSantis goes live on Twitter. <laughs> I heard about that. Uh, but no, so I just want people to understand, so I don't want anybody to come in here later on and be like, what the fuck? That's your number one? Like, because obviously, I mean, I, well, you know what? My number one might be, it might be the same, but either way, I don't, when we get into the top fives. I fully expect us to have the same number one, but it sounds like I could be wrong, which is exciting. No, I think we do have the same number one, hundred percent. I, I, no, I guarantee that we still do. Okay. Then that, that makes, that checks out. I feel like sense. a good idea though, is we should put out our honorable mentions though, before we get into our top 10. Just like, we don't have to really talk about them a lot. Just, just name them. I see what you're saying. I do, but if we do that, then they'll know they're not on the list. So it'll it'll, oh, yeah, that's it'll true. suck it out. It takes away everything. It's like it's like when you give a gift to your, your wife or your girlfriend or whatever, and you're like, it's perfume before she even opens it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's it's like fucking the Forrest Gump. He was like, uh, these are for you. I had some. <laughs> like, <he's giving> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There's some chocolates missing from this bunch. Speaking of which, we promised to start sooner, to start faster. Uh, normally, I, I promise to finish later because it comes so fast. Um, fast as fuck, boy. I just see it <laughs> fast as fuck, boy. And I can't hold it in anymore. They're like, think about baseball. And I'm like, I come even faster when I think about baseball. Nolan Ryan and those buns. Um, mm, Chipper Jones. <laughs> old Chipper Jones, man. He will get it. Uh, okay. So where is this fucking button? Here it is. Share. Share screen. Fucking do it. Here we go. Okay. All right. So, Jay, what is your number 10? These are, by the way, once again, this is the scariest top 10 horror movies we've ever seen. Not the best top 10 mm -hmm. we've ever seen. Yeah. Be a totally different list. Um, My number 10 is the great American classic, classic the Angela Houston 1990 The Witches. Uh, oh. I know people are going to be like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's literally in the description as tense and playful and magical. There's nothing magical about that except for the swelling of psychiatry bills that you will have to have if you see this when you're a child. It came out in 1990. It scared the fuck out of me. The very beginning of this movie about the when the little girl gets sucked into like the painting and she's like, Papa, like, and she grows <laughs> old inside the painting because they can never get her out of the painting. And like the, the, the dude, it's the way it was shot. The, the, the weird witch with her eyes like glowing gray and like hiding behind the alleyway. It's like, come here, little girl. You know, it was, it wasn't Harvey Weinstein, but it was still, it was fucking, <laughs> but it was fucking terrifying. And for, as a, as a movie targeted for kids, uh, like even when they get into the, when they become like the little kids become mice and they're running around the hotel trying to be turned back into humans. It's surreal as fuck. It's nightmarish. And I can't believe they the target audience were kids. Like, there's a lot of people that actually I didn't I wasn't scared, but the the uh, little monsters freaked a lot of people out. Well, they they did. They, hang on, are you okay? Sorry, I so I pulled up I pulled up the the stream in the background to catch the, the chat up on the other end, so I wasn't sure if I still had you there or not. So yeah, sorry, I, I was yeah. not listening. I. If that's the they don't they turn him into like a mouse or some shit in that too? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, at the very yeah near the middle of the movie. By the way, Rowan Atkinson is this in this too? But I was so fucking scared, I forgot how funny he was. But he's in this too. Yeah, they turn him into little mice because they get caught because that fat kid's eating chocolate or whatever, and the, the the witches are in the conference room and they're like hanging out and they're 
they're planning, you know, whatever. And the, they, he pulls, they, well, no, he's uh they, they like lured him in with candy. And then the other little boy gets caught and they turn him into mice and they're running through the hotel and they're trying to get turned back. And he, dude, it's fucking scary. It was like nightmarish. It is. It is. I just watched that for the first time. Like, it's, like dude, there's year. no way that's a kid's movie. I mean, it felt like, like it, it's, it's a scramble brain. Yeah, no, I, I just watched that with Katie. Katie showed it to me and I was like, that's actually fucked up. Like the, the look of it. And even though the new one, I didn't watch it, but what's her name? Um, the actress, Angelica, she bangs, Angelica Houston. She, no, in the in the new one. Um, oh, I don't know. I didn't even know they were. Oh, yeah, I do. They made the room that She banged Jake Gyllenhaal in that Love and Other Drugs movie. That's a really good movie, by the way. Uh, fuck, I can't remember her name. Um, but anyways, yeah, even her face now, when she's like, yeah, yeah. Do yeah. Right, the, yeah. What, the, that's another right. thing that's underrated about that film. The the makeup effects on the witches when they pull off their human skin and they're all like, oh, die, oh. they all look like, <laughs> <laughs> they all look like failed plastic surgery out of Hollywood. Yeah. Like that shit, dude, I, I'm telling you, like, I, I if it had had a rating of like 15 and over or 14 and over, I was like, that totally makes sense. But for like marketing it as like a, like something that you would let your seven-year-old watch. It was different back in the day, dude. They they had different ratings for shit. Like it wasn't Jaws like PG thirteen. Yeah, like, yeah, and everybody always uses those. Like, you know, there's nothing wrong with the with the horror movie being rated PG thirteen because Jaws was I. It was different. That we did things yeah. very differently back then. Well, you know? 1990 was the year of like toughen up, Buttercup. Take the dress <laughs> off and stop having a tea party for yourself. No one in this world gives a shit about you <laughs> and your problems. Toughen up. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. Tuck in, tuck out. Every time I would go into any like blockbuster Hollywood video, whatever video selection movie warehouse, it would always be listed in the kids section next to like He-Man and She-Ra. And I'm like, yeah. that's bullshit. Like that is literally a, a ticking time bomb for some poor kid. That's a, that That's a super solid one. It absolutely fucking is that. I didn't even think about that one. I would say that my number 10, uh, this is going to be, it's kind of weird. All right. You guys, I, I'm, I have a fucking, deep deep fear of aliens so that's that's where this partly comes from and yes it's it's fake as shit it's like it's a total bullshit thing it's a straight up lie they even try to make it seem like it was real when it wasn't but it's the fourth kind that's a good movie and it is it is man and uh mila jovovich and uh oh, fucking who's he's always he's in every movie we ever talk will william Patton is in this mm. but dude I'm so scared of aliens and I'm so scared of getting abducted. And when they mix that with the found footage and she's doing those tapes and she's talking to them and they're like, <laughs> and they start lifting up in the camera, like, dude, that shit got me deep in my cockles. Uh, and I saw it in the theater and it didn't even scare me that bad in the theater. I think cause I went, it makes in you think so, afterwards. Yeah, well, I went in so ready to be fucked up. And then like, but if you watch it late night and you just like turn it on streaming or whatever, and it gets to those parts, you're like, I don't fucking feel good, dad. You know, yeah, it dude. feels weird. And then they had that white owl that would pop up and they were like, whoa, the calm the racism down right there, sir. <laughs> it could have been a black owl for us. We could be wrong. It could be any. Yeah, it's a brownish. It's a it's a bingo. It's a barn owl. Calm it's it a mixed down there. owl. <laughs> Not mixed, but <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, the yeah, white owl. You know, I know what you're talking about. Like a bingo cat. But no, it, it's fucking scary as shit, man. Uh, whether you're scared of aliens or not, if you can get over how bullshit it is, because yeah. it really is like they really threw the wool over our eyes and we're like, this is real. Ah, they try to play a witch it with like half the effort. They kind of did a like, pretty good job, though, with the tapes, like the way that they were compiling the information and it was like slowly released. Yeah, the, the sketchy thing they did, though, was when she like she walks out like as like almost an actor and she's like, mm. this is the true story about missing Alaskan. Fox. Oh yeah. That was, you know, yeah, like, I remember that. and it's like, and then at the end, but that one girl with the face with the really like drained I, face. That was scary. You, whew, God, Dude. I actually forgot scary. about the fourth. That movie did fuck me up. I, that, that actually was a, like a pretty scarring movie. Yeah. Mila Jovovich, when you said she walks out and tries to be an actress, it's like, she's really thinking like, does Paul, does my husband, Paul Anderson have someone that I can fuck on screen in front of him? Is there another Resident Evil movie coming out that I can do that? Where I can have superpowers right. too? Kate Beckinsale, same thing. Same thing. That's the weirdest them. thing, by the way, is like not like I mean, obvious. You know what that is? Kate Beckinsale is a different story. I think Kate Beckinsale's husband is just so proud of what a hot piece of ass that he has. He just wants to show her off to the world. It's one of those things. If you can, if if, if he pulled her, like he's got to have good confidence, anyways. And then know? some people are going to be like, "Well, what about Sherry Moon Zombie?" No, I mean, Kate Beckinsale and Sherry Moon Zombie. That's like literally trying to compare, like I don't know, pop art to the Mona Lisa. There's it's just not going to work. Between being confident and just being a cuck, you know what I mean? And you never know. You never know. Uh, like if you're working at Burger King and the manager's like, "Hey, if you want to come over and fuck my wife." That is not confidence. Do you know what's That's strange, not. dude? Everybody's going to say it. They're going to say the, the hottest that she's ever been, Kate Beckinsale, that is, would be Underworld. But I think the hottest she's ever been is in Click. 
I don't have a problem with that. I, I she's wearing those little boy, like, uh, what are they? The, the boxer pants, the shorts. And she's like, at yeah. the there's something about that shit. Like, I don't know. It just looks like she's like DTF. Yeah, I get it. Uh, right uh, away. Uh, don't touch the Frankenfurters. Yeah. You can't touch the Frankenfurters That's because they're not ready yet. They have to be in the microwave for 20 more seconds. Yeah. You it's don't want to get sick, but no, I mean, I, it's, it's also, it's just like, I don't know. She just has that girl next door vibe going on in that movie. She does. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Same thing. I feel the same way about Tia Leone. Tia Leone in mm. Bad Boys. Man. That, yeah, but there's that, something about her, dude. I, I know, but she also, she's hot and I, I can get behind it. But at the same time, it's something like, I feel like you're hiding chlamydia from me and you're going to give it to me if I lay down with you. <laughs> That's just because she looks like that one girl who actually had chlamydia that you knew. <laughs> well, yeah, but she had it after I knew her. Wait, wait, yeah, yeah, no, I, no, I, yeah, I didn't yeah. get clap. Just, just, just disclaimer: I ain't got I'll, the clap. I'll put it. I'll put it on the ticker. Disclaimer: Jay was with that girl before. Nah, Jay. it'd be funny. What you should do is, it's like, it, yes, it's true. This man has no dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Um. So okay. So let me let me get to some of your old super chats really quick, and then we'll go right back to the list. We'll do our number nines because you guys have been in here waiting. Britton Nick says second stream in three days. I'm hard. Hey guys. Hey, all right. Eve, what the hell up? That's what we thought. We're going to use what's that game? Oh, uh, horseshoeing. We're going to use your dick as a horseshoe tossing thing. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how, that's how you play horseshoe. You just have to oh, throw it as a little pole. Oh, that's actually really attractive. I'm actually kind of turned on right now. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about using his, his dick as but a They're steak. actually just anal beads. They're not horseshoes. They're anal beads. And we'll see if we can get it on the pole. Magnetic anal, anal beads mm -hmm. so that they stick, you know? That's what I'm talking because about. Because you have a piece of. It's covered in cum, oil, so it's going to be but, sticky. That's true. And it kind of breaks the magnetic force field. Mm -hmm. Come, come will break any magnetic force field. You just rub it and cut, and it won't work anymore. It just won't work anymore. Yeah. Aaron Wachowski, one of the Wachowski brothers, says, "What's up, guys?" Well, hey, actually, I should. I don't know if that is it. The Wachow that's differently spelled. Wachowski. I think his name's Wachowski. Wachowski. Ancient tiny secret, huh? <laughs> uh, Resign up for your Patreon today. Get it up, baby. Hey, all right, yeah. man. Appreciate oh, yeah. you. Appreciate you. We're going to be seeing you in there on Saturday, hopefully, and it's going to be good. By the way, I, it actually looked like you said, uh, it, I read it like I resigned from your Patreon today. I was like, well, you don't have to announce it. Just fucking leave. Just leave then. That's one of, the, it's one of those confidence tests. Like, I know. What do you I see think, when you see this I know word? I see someone quitting. I just, I just read, I read it like resigned. I resigned from your Patreon. <laughs> I was like, it's not like a CEO job. You don't have to announce it. <laughs> I'm sorry to see you go, sir. <laughs> I say that to sometimes they leave me comments. I'm like, get, they're like, this is fucking trash. I'm like, you don't have to announce your departure, Sally. Nobody cares. Yeah. That's always the best comeback. Out. That I've seen people say that in comments, like where they'll say that shit. Like, who okay, hey, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> See ya. Crease fold. Every time I think of that, I think of our friend Kyle. He used to walk up and finger oh, our yeah. elbows. Uh, hey Mike and Jay the Dutch, the vanishing is my scariest. Jay the Dutch. Okay, I guess I'm Dutch now. No, he's saying the Dutch movie, The Vanishing. Oh, the van. I guess, yeah, I kind of, I guess, like, uh, uh, Schnorken, Florken, um, I, the, the Dutch words, I don't know, but, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, The Vanishing. The offspring song. Yeah, I know. Well, The Vanishing is actually a good movie. I, I actually watched that. that, that that's the one with John Lee Ammo, the all the American one, where they just keep, they're, they're running and they go to that bar and every, the lights keep going out and they Are see you shadows. thinking of The Vanishing on 7th Street? That's what I said. <laughs> I, I said it. I know. That's why I said I said it's a similar title. It's not the same one, obviously. I only know. I've not seen it. I need to watch it apparently because I saw it when I was doing research today. Is that not uh, the same one? Is that I thought that was the American version, the vanishing on on Seventh Street, and uh, you know, I don't. I don't. I on the corner wrong. of Sixth, maybe it is. I could be. I've the, never seen either. So the sequel is like still gone on the corner of Sixth and Eighth. <laughs> <laughs> The Vanishing. It's about our ex-girlfriends. Yeah. Uh, Jack Ryan Boyd, action superstar, says, lots of love. Have you two seen Vacancy, The Ringer, and Grease? Three random picks I know. Just curious. Yes. All of them. Yes. All of them. Yes. When the fuck did we get ice cream? <laughs> uh, yeah, I I've seen The Ringer. Uh, the Ringer was... Uh... Yeah, that's the one. The, Old Johnny Knoxville. We get ice cream. Yeah, that's the one. And Vacancy, we actually just did a... It was either a Patreon review or just a regular review or commentary on that one. We, it uh, was a it was a review like seven years ago when we were doing the Loomis opens. Mm. Uh, and it, oh, he had to stand in front of that fucking scary ass. Oh shit, yeah. dude! And that load, you guys. I'm not gonna say where it was because you know those people are just trying their best. They're trying to live it, their life. But that shit, 
if you guys ever see Bloodsport, when they walk into the seedy part of of in Bangkok <laughs> or or wherever the fuck they are, in if once you step out of the out of the uh, the sunlight into the narrow corridors, it's time to protect your nuts, guys. That's how it felt. Like it felt like there was gonna be like a kumite behind us. It was a secret underground society. That scared me, dude. We popped out and yeah. did like a quick video, and then I was like, let's bounce it. But yeah, <laughs> when, when uh, so vacancies, it's like it's a shitty CD motel, and it's a Luke really Wilson, good yeah. movie. Super, under, I love that movie. Uh, uh, Luke Wilson and Kate Beckinsale, yeah, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I but so. Jay and I were, were driving around and we we're having Loomis open the video in front of locations that were close <laughs> to what they look like. So we just we literally went to the seediest fucking uh, mo not hotel, but motel, motel, yeah, it was motel. And yeah. Jay was like, dude, I'm not getting that. I was like, dude, I didn't want to. <laughs> He dude, because like, their the the fucking like, no, doors were open. I could see their living rooms. <laughs> <laughs> but he got. I was like, no, you got it. You, I act like I was gonna open the door. And Jay went out. I was like, no, I'm just gonna feel me from inside the car, dude. He's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, I can't have to drive away. Real quick. <laughs> That's like Mike rolled the window down. <laughs> <laughs> this dude was out there with his fucking laundry and shirt off, just staring at us. <laughs> yeah, dude. I swear, I sound like when I was at. And so it's become vacancy. It sounded like a goddamn grizzled uh, captain of the police force doing a bust. And I was like, dude, these fuckers have guns. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe they have war at their homes and yelling at them. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Oh, uh, and we, yeah, we squeezed out of there really quick. In Greece, uh, yeah, of course. I mean, everybody's seen Greece. Everybody knows Greece. Greece That's Greece. the only one I may not have seen all the way through. I hate you never saw Greece. I nah, I don't like musicals. So well, I liked it so much. I, I've done it at karaoke for the summer loving song. Oh yeah, yeah. You got. I think you got someone to do that. Wasn't some girl like Duke or with me? Well, that uh, the, the the cool DJ you know, used to do it with me. Oh, that's right, Al Allison? Allison, 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 Allison. Yeah, she was really nice. Yeah, Norris of Chuck says, "What's up, guys? What is a horror franchise that you would like to see make a resurgence, except for not Independence Day? Uh, make a resurgence, except for the obvious Friday Thirteenth and Nightmare on Elm Street. Take care, fellas. Well, you know, it would be I, I, like I hate I, like." I, I hesitate even, even to say it because I know that someone's going to get butthurt about it and they're going to be like, oh my God, I can't believe it. But I do, I, I really would like to see Jeepers Creepers come back. I would. I would like to see a different director, you know, that's not a piece of shit and take control of that that film and reboot it and, and get it started on its own merry way. I, I think that would be great if they had a Jeepers Creeper resurgence that the movies didn't suck and it wasn't owned by a total creep. And then on top of that, I also think Pumpkinhead I would love to see a true. Well, you know what, Pumpkinhead is so good the way that it is. It's just so awesome. I, I really maybe a sequel to it that that just didn't suck. I hated Blood and Wings. I fucking hated it. Yeah, I I didn't mind the second one, but they did four of those fucking things. Man. Yeah, and they get worse um, and worse. I, I'll say I, I literally just did a video on this, and I was actually trying to look to see my notes because I couldn't remember anything from it. So even though I had a really good list for this down, and I just have zero memory left in my body whatsoever, I'll say. Um, 28 months later i would like to see that sequel finally i would like to see them bring mm. that franchise back and do that because that would be cool and the faculty i would love to see them do a uh an actual um requel to the faculty and bring back as many cast members as they can including guaranteed to jack you up Josh, yeah, yeah, Josh we, yeah a cokehead that turned into a teacher well it fits it could happen in today's teacher's world. Yeah, he's, he's no, a co you, he's a cokehead teacher. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> make him a uh, make him an NFL player since he was like I joined the football team and everything's nice now at the end. Um, but I actually tweeted that and Robert Rodriguez actually fucking liked the tweet. Uh -oh. So I was like, we got Robert on board. Who's next? And no, moving and on moving up, on. we're moving on now. By the way, rest in peace, uh, Tina Turner. Rest in peace. Yes, I did see that in the chat. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I, well, I saw that she died. I, you know, it's it's so crazy, dude. I literally a few days ago, I, I always go. It's my go-to song. One of my go-to songs is the one that she did for uh, for Thunderdome. Cause you're one of the living. Like it was a badass, and it also had the, the sax player from Lost Boys. That was her backup. She did a she did a Bond song too, right? Yeah, Blade. Goldeneye. Yeah, yeah, and she, she acted in Mad Max, I think. Right? Yeah, so she, she was a character. Movie. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, and, and like, yeah, rest in peace there. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't follow. I didn't even realize that she was still with us. Answer, she just, I, yeah, that happens a lot to me. I, I'm like, oh, shit. I, didn't, I had no idea. I thought Sean Connery was still alive as of like a week ago. I saw yeah, R.I.P. Sean Connery. I was like, what? I know. It's so weird that he's gone. You know, it's weird. He died on Halloween. Yeah, that's it. Someone retweeted an old tweet. I was like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. um, but no, uh, Tina Turner. I Yeah, that she was amazing, dude. She, she also was had live. Amazing oh, ass shit. legs, too. Amazing yeah. legs. 
I and I also always just think of liar, liar. He's like, he was like, where would Tina Turner been if she just took it? Roll over and hit me again, Ike, because there's <laughs> yeah. no such thing as the weaker sex. <laughs> um, but yeah, rest in peace, Tina Turner. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Norris. Thank you, man. Inferno sat. Six. <laughs> hey guys, last night at work, I was listening to the 90s soundtrack stream and I was laughing out loud when Jay was doing Loomis for the bodyguard song. That's I when we go for Tina Turner. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. uh, also, whatever happened to another Merkin's live stream? Roy is busy and, uh, and, you know, <laughs> and he don't like us. So fuck him. No, I, I well, <laughs> we just haven't. I mean, we, we he just hasn't come or we just haven't had uh, the cross paths of the starry nights yet. Yeah, I, and uh, honestly, we actually talked to him a couple weeks ago about doing something really cool that would have been fucking awesome. That been, but we yeah, just that's true. we couldn't do it because the schedule uh, that we had while it was going on. I won't say anything about it because I don't know what's been you know what's going on with that. But like, uh, all I know is that every, I feel so fucking bad dude because every time we had Roy on the show, we had awful technical difficulties. Like terrible like either there was a terrible lag or we couldn't get his audio i think your internet fucking took a dump on you and i mean that's like... just par for the course roy should have known that so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were that's not on me that's on him hey like if you're gonna if you're gonna stream with a guy that uses net stream that's your own fault <laughs> <laughs> uh what a nice generous he's so guy. cool man yeah roy is an awesome dude love that guy talented talented folks too if uh, yeah. um, we haven't done a, a stream for them or a, a reaction them in a while maybe we should do that soon but yeah if you guys already know who the merkins are but if you haven't check them out um amazing fucking folks thank you inferno really appreciate that man let's go to number eight nine nine nine, nine? we gotta move it on we're, on, we're only at nine shit <laughs> you know some poor bastards like all i want to do is listen to your fucking rankings and you continuously spout diarrhea from your mouth that no one gives a shit about Please shut Dad? the fuck up. Yeah, I Dad? know it does. I was like, grandfather, is it you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yes, shit. Uh, my number nine is going to be the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh. Uh, it, and, and there's a reason for it. It wasn't the, you know, the idea, you know, of a a, a big, bad killer kind of jason -y kind of dude running around killing people with a chainsaw. Not, that's not what scared me. It was the way it was shot. It was the way it was the music. It, like I guess it was the cinematography. It really did make a surreal type of environment that you it just you felt dirty as fuck. Like it, it really did put you in a box that you felt like you were trapped in with the like with those people too. And like when she's like at the dinner table and they're all laughing and she's screaming and starting to cry and laugh at the same time because of all this madness that's going around her and they're all like ah, ah, ah and they're like trying to scoop like Dirty old vanilla ice sticks. cream in her face. I don't know. I know it was it was not vanilla ice cream. It was probably fucking vanilla cum. But I that shit scared me, dude. I don't know what it was about that. My whole second thing. favorite flavor of cum. Yeah, Mike was in the closet. He provided the flavor. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know what it was about that particular movie. It really did just like after I I, and I didn't realize how much of a fucked up movie this was until I I bought uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre the original on Blu-ray. Uh, a couple of years ago and I watched it I just on, you know, just I, I, I'm going to check this. And it was like late at night and I was watching this and uh, dude, it, like it sucked me in. Like it, it sucked sound. Like it fucking got me. I, and when I was watching it, dude, I was like, oh my God, like this is like fucked up. And then I was thinking like, you know, this shit could probably really happen. Like this shit could probably really happen in some backwood. Holy fuck. Where am I at? You know, part of Texas or Arkansas or Alabama or wherever. Uh, you know, I mean, of course it could happen in a northern town or whatever, but, you know, they have electricity, so that means they have lights. Usually in these <laughs> backwater areas of the south, these motherfuckers are, like, using Dixie cups to communicate with each other and not even phones. So could, could happen in an Arby's parking lot. You know, wherever. You never know. But, dude, I, there was something about that movie that just, like, w I guess the best way, it's, it, was, it was, like, unnerving. It was just unnerving. That whole, the whole sequence of events was just unnerving. Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to speak on it because... It's not in my list, uh, or it is, and I don't want to talk about but it. But that yet, was uh, but... Tobey Hooper. And uh, by the way, I do think that Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake, is incredibly awesome. But there's a right. lot of more of a of a sheen on that, like a cinematic sheen. This was just raw and dirty. There's nothing like that movie. No. Nope. There's just nothing like it, in my opinion. You know? Texas you know, it was shot like the, the Last House on the Left, in that kind of weird, like, dirty... Yeah. 
cinematography run and gun kind of way yeah like there's tons of like grindhouse fucking movies that make you feel dirty but none of them have that fucking quality or realness to no. them, in my opinion as that movie does yeah uh so i'm skipping ahead of a couple super chats here all right because i saw uh this this they do this thing that sometimes they pop up here and i want to point this out i don't know what it says i don't know where it's from i just see the little thing i'm going to click it because um uh, just have to give it attention really quick holy fucking donkey dicks what um, happened I mean, fuck, uh, things not working. Uh, good old John fucking Winston, man. John Winston. John fucking Winston. Sorry, right. there, John Winston. Oh my God, John Winston. Oh fuck, Winston. So I With take it that you're a survivor of, of viewing the witches as well. <laughs> man, what an incredible man. gift, dude! Thank you so much. Holy fuck, dude, John. I haven't, we haven't seen John in a fucking minute. And remember, he's the one that always comes in here and does this shit. And he's just like, I, know. I ain't got nothing to say because this fucking speaks for itself. Now take it, boys. Goddamn John Winston, man. John Winston's like the, the fucking Jesse James of the outlaw West. He just comes in. He don't need to talk about nothing. I robbed that train. I ain't got to explain myself to you or the authorities. <laughs> Here's the bill. If I give you the funk, you're going to take it. Dude, yeah. thank you so fucking thank much. You, thank you, man. Thank you, John. No, we're safe for fucking that. That's insanity, and we really appreciate that. Um, fuck you, dude. Not fuck you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, but honestly, you, at these rates, I probably will. <laughs> uh, thanks, dude. Thank you, man. Very generous. Really, that's crazy. That's that's fucking crazy in the best of ways. And also another fucking extremely fucking generous um, super chat that we got while we were running our fat mouse is from our buddy Jacob. Pop, pop, Jacob, as Jacob. I like to call him. Uh, really do appreciate that as well, man. That's that's fucking wild. What's up, dudes? I love you guys. I always I would love to see a 70s, 80s, and 90s martial arts films tier list. God damn it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Would love to see where you guys play some of those films. Hope all is well and love you guys. Have some beers on me. We hey, fucking man. will. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, really sweet of you guys. Holy shit. You guys are just truly legends. All of you guys. Um, thank you guys. Uh well, we did have um what was that? We the, the action hero channel. We we tried to do that, um, where we were just going to dedicate that whole channel to just doing things like that, like seventies, eighties, nineties, martial arts, action films, and stuff like that. It really didn't. It was a lot of work to do two channels at once, and then to keep up yeah. with doing that. And and you know, it, but yeah, I would. We I totally be down to doing that. I mean, our our uh, always our number one love in life is to talk about like we we talk about like. Arnold and and Sly and John Claude Van Damme and all those guys, like they shaped our lives growing up just as much as like Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees did. So, fuck yeah, we would. I'll karate chop your face. Hadouken. Let's do that together. <laughs> Get pumping. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, that's that's a great. Jay had a great idea a while back to do a top ten fighting movies of all time mm. list, and I think that that kind of coincides with it. So that would pretty much fit. You got the Kumite, you got uh, Kickboxer, fucking uh, the Rocky movies are going to make a big dent in that. But I think that's one we should do and do pretty fucking soon, Jacob. Um, I hope you're still playing music, man. Um, and uh, that's very sweet. Of you. Look Thank at Jacob's so profile picture. You know he's still playing music and racking in the vagina. Slapping no the deal. best, man. Slapping the best. He Stop plays the, the bass basketball. and then he strings along the vagine like a violinist. Come, the <laughs> bass players get it. They get mm. it. They do. Bass players and drummers. Oh, um, by the way, really quick. Speaking of Jean Claude Van Damme and Jacob, might be excited about this as well. Mortal Kombat is coming back as well. Mortal yes. Kombat One. Did you hear about this? Yes. He posted six crazy. days ago. Dude, Jean Claude Van Damme is going to be in the game as Johnny Cage. The like Ed Boon. The guy that you know helped make Mortal Kombat, or the guy that was behind the driving force of Mortal Kombat, said specifically they always wanted Johnny Cage to be, or, or that Jean Claude Van Damme to be Johnny Cage because they patterned the whole outfit, everything off Bloodsport, and, and he said for whatever reason it didn't work out because Van Damme unfortunately had more fucking cocaine in his brain than Scarface at the time, and he just didn't know a good deal, and he wanted to play Guile in Street Fighter. But dude, I just wanted to. Do it. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a time travel game, which, whatever, I don't care. But somehow it's going to take place before the whole Mortal Kombat, you know, the Mortal Kombat we know and love, the Sub Zeros and Scorpions. It was, it's before that. So you're going to have Kung Lao in that. Um, and then uh, Molina, Katana. No, maybe not Molina, Katana for sure. And But Johnny Cage is going to be in it for sure. And it's going to be John Claude fucking uh, Duke. The, the, yeah. They're unsure whether or not he's going to be able to voice it. I'm sure he's going to, though. But That'll dude, God amazing. damn it. How cool is that? It's going to. Like, I, I don't even, I can't play those fighting games at all. Like, I suck, and I get my ass, like, creamed every time. Cream pied. 
Wow. But um, I'll buy it just because you could you could have a Jean Claude Van Damme skin and play as Jean Claude fucking Damme. Can you imagine that? In your ass, dude. I know, I know. That's what I thought too. I was like, that goes back to the original idea of Mortal Kombat before he decided to do Street Fighter instead. We're actually going to get to play that. Yeah. I don't even play games. I might, I might fucking. Uh, I'm just going to buy it to look at his. I hope he, he's got to be on the cover. If you get John Claude Van Damme, he's got to yeah, be on the dude. cover as Johnny Cage. Dude, imagine a cover of Mortal Kombat. John, fucking John Claude's like. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I, I want him to be doing. I want him to be doing the splits and doing this from Bloodsport. Oh fuck! It'd be amazing. And like, it's I, just in his Johnny Cage outfit. Yeah, I would buy it. In that case, I would fucking buy it. I would buy it with my heart and soul. Um, my number nine <laughs> is gonna be. But I, I did see that. And I was like, oh shit! Yeah, that's amazing. That's what we've always wanted deep in our cockles. Mm -hmm. Um, my number nine is gonna be the Blair Witch Project. Um, mm. which project? Which you remember? This was awfully. Hi, on Jay. This yeah. is Jay. I think this is your number one horror movie of the nineties, if I'm not mistaken. Right? I think it was, yeah. Uh, which is amazing because, like, you know, I I've, I've said it a billion times. If I said it once, this is the greatest <sighs> marketing fucking ploy that amazing. has ever graced the movies. And we told the story a thousand times, but like, legit, was staying home alone one night at my house when I was like thirteen or twelve or some shit. The fucking sci-fi special came on and was just showing some of that footage, right? And I thought it was real, and I literally got scared to be home alone it actually fucked me up man and then the website fucked me up and then the whole lead up to the movie fucked me up and then the day we're in the th fucking theater every theater was sold out this girl i was trying to date for like six years in school his mom took us in her shitty van um to like three different theaters and i think you you were with me right you yeah were there me and way. cody we, we, and, and then Lindsay. yeah yeah uh uh Lindsay ingram was her name that's right yeah, yeah. i wouldn't have said her last then, name but uh <laughs> Oh, that's fine. Yeah. It's been a long time. Yeah, um, yeah. But she um, they, she took us to like three different theaters. They were all sold out because it was such a big deal. And then we get to Kentucky Theater, which is like an old school theater. And this, we're waiting in line. We're like, finally got our tickets. And I'm like, man. And I just found out the night before. I just had it ruined for me that it wasn't actually real. Because yeah. you guys got to understand, this is before like the crazy internet stuff. It's the first viral marketing campaign ever for a movie. Like that, yeah. And and this woman comes out and she's just like screaming, like coming out of the theater, she's like, oh, mm. oh, got like tears on her face, like, oh God, oh, you don't know what you're in, like fuck. And then like so scared going in, so disappointed when it ended, so disappointed. But yeah. the experience of watching it like was super fucking scary. And going back and watching it now, um, and not having such high expectations, it's still pretty scary when you can put yourself back in those shoes. So show, yeah, I think it show. deserves it. I give it, I give it, I give it up to you. You made it real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I give it up to you. I give oh. it up to you. Uh, well, because I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and say it by the way. Um what? My huh? number 8 is Blair huh? Witch. Oh shit. Yeah, I, I missed what? it by one. We missed each other hey. like two boats passing in the night. Look at us. Look, Look at us. us. We're friends now. We're going to do <laughs> best friend stuff. We're going to go build stuff in the woods and build a fort and then do karate <laughs> in the night. <laughs> We're going to fuck you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I'll, I'm gonna, you know, it's pretty much everything Mike said. Um, and and again, I, I just think it's the idea, the fact that you didn't know for the longest time whether or not this was real, and the way they shot it, and everything leading up to the end, which was awful. It was one of the most like cock blocky type of endings you've ever seen in your life when you go to see a horror movie. But up to that point, the little whispers when they're in the in the tent, and you can hear little kids laughing and the rocks moving, like they used everything to their advantage. And it works so fucking well. That's why, like, and it did. It stuck with me for a long. That shit scared me, dude. Because I, yeah. where I live out in the country, I had woods surrounding my house, and I'm like, what if there's a fucking witch that lives out in the fort that we made forever ago? But she just lives there. Like, she took it over, and she's gonna throw rocks at my house one night and be like, "Hey, why don't you come over and play with me?" I'm like, unless you're <laughs> fucking hot, no I'm way. <laughs> if you're hot, I'll come over and be seduced by you, siren. But I don't think you are. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of which the the woods behind your house i don't remember I, I i don't remember the story completely right but you guys had those woods behind your house and one day when this when the movie was about to come out we went out me you and cody went into the woods deep into the woods mm -hmm. to do a gay stuff together uh and do magic spells the gathering only. We play yeah. card games. <laughs> yeah, the, gay ga the gathering of gays. <laughs> uh, tell me a story. Are you afraid of the, the fuck dick? Uh, uh, yeah. we, no, we went out there and like there was one of those Blair Witch things just hanging. And one of us had done it. Or one of you had done it. Yeah, we had done one of it. Yeah, we made that shit. It wasn't like. I, I can't, 
Yeah, but it was just hanging there in one of those like Blair Witch sticks. And we and then all of a sudden it was like written in the stars. Some fucking redneck with his tractor started his tractor up right next to him. <laughs> yeah. And all three of us freaked the fuck out and just took off running. And then Cody fell down. He we're, we're running away. And yeah. then he falls down. He falls down on the dirt path. <laughs> and I think at this point we knew we were fucking idiots. And he just falls down and he does the force gump. He goes, Dear God, make me a bird. So I have to clock, 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 clock. That's true, he did. <laughs> Well, you know, it's one of those things like one of the guys screamed. I don't know if it was Mike or Cody or me. It might have been me. I mean, it's when you're terrified of something. You don't even know that you're screaming. But once that 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 blood curdling girl scream comes out, every dude that's around you lets out a blood curdling girl scream. And they all just start <laughs> running the way that the guy that was screaming is running. And so what of like somebody screamed or yelled and then they were like, ah, and then we all it was like <laughs> like dude, it was like the most uh, I don't know, like the goonyish. It was like the Goonies. It was like a Goonies moment. Like yeah. they they just saw something that was probably something very mundane or or happenstance. And like I and either we had made that or that was just the 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 twigs had aligned themselves to look like that. And we had just seen the trailers for the movie and our dumb shit imagination was running away with us because we were going outside <laughs> and playing in the woods, not like sitting like kids do today on TikTok and shit because we didn't have the internet. We had to go out and actually fucking make our games. And then somebody <laughs> started up a tractor. And that just set it all off. It was fun time, man. That was a fun. That was a fun experience because the, the 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 high that went like the endorphins and the adrenaline. I felt like we yeah. were in a police chase. Like, yeah. By was, the time was, we got, it was like, did you catch it? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm a fucking shot at us. Yeah. Yeah. Normally we have to murder hookers to get that kind of like sensation out of us, but that yeah. day we just it was a good totally old natural desensitized now. Uh, good yeah. old natural drug free fun. <laughs> but you know what's fucked up to think about is that like. If I didn't make that Blair Witch symbol and you didn't make that Blair Witch symbol and Cody didn't make that Blair Witch symbols, like, dude, what if that shit was real and just this whole time we've been thinking the other one did it? And no, we dude, I, you know, know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like to think about conspiracy theories and things like that because <laughs> <laughs> that means it's real. I ain't we want that. We were cursed. That's why we had such a bad luck with women. What all if there was actually a fucking real Blair Witch watching us? Like these fucking idiots. I'm not gonna eat their souls. I'll be dumber if I do. Yeah, that guy doesn't quite. Fuck <laughs> yeah, it's him. like if I take a bite out of them, it's like taking a bite out of like someone that's soaked in alcohol and acid. Like it's just gonna yeah. ruin me and my brain cells. I'm not gonna eat them. <laughs> Blair Witch was like, fuck that guy. He doesn't wipe. I can smell yeah. him from here. Yeah, it's like, I'm, I'm going to let him go. go. Fuck them. I don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking not, not wiping paid off, dude. Yeah. For the first time ever, it paid off. Uh, my number eight was... Uh, uh, oh, so this is going to get some shit uh, for sure. But uh, we just reviewed this movie. It's arachnophobia. Um, ah, I'm sure it's going to get shit. Gotcha. You know, I get it. It's a fun... Woo! It's a party movie. Like, whatever. It's like poltergeist in that sense. But... It just, as far as movies, it's Jay. Jay said it when we started. It's hard to make this list. It's as hard as I am yeah. when my dad comes over. But check, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it, no, it's it's a really hard list to make because, like, you realize what, and I and I implore you guys to do this for yourselves and put it in the comments below after the video. But like. Making a list of the top 10 scariest movies of all time. There's so few movies that really actually scare you. Like it's it's a fucking hard list to make. Yeah. And arachnophobia cracks this list for me because it's generally scary every time I watch it, no matter how many times I've seen it or how funny or entertaining or lighthearted it is. When those spiders come out, either when they're jumping and going ee! and jumping, like or in the shower or in yeah. the cornflakes box, or especially at the end when they come out from behind the TV and they're like scattered about the house. It yeah. actually is scary in a way that most movies are not to me. So yeah, man, and you're like spiders are some fucking creepy ass insects. Like yeah. I, they are. I mean, and, and to imagine having your whole house invaded, like termites, Ugh. like or something, and they just are crawling out of every. It's like it's like being audited by the IRS. You didn't it see hurts. it coming, and you have no idea where they're gonna pop out next. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Like even resident said in the popcorn. <laughs> Fucking oh yeah, Mimi. Ooh. Yeah. And by the way, that was the chick from uh Drew Carey show, Mimi. Yeah, yeah. It's just there's something up there's very there's something super invasive about like they could be anywhere and they are everywhere. But spiders yeah, are awesome, me, by the way. The spiders are awesome, they do a lot of good for us. They just look like shit. Yeah, I don't fucking it's like, like our government. I mean, it looks like shit a lot of the time on you know, people just but they do a lot of good for us too. 
I don't agree with you. <laughs> you shut your fucking <laughs> commie mouth, asshole. <laughs> Nicholas Weir said, LOL, Jay, the witches really did su scare me as a kid. I get it. It had a vibe that was very unsettling. Yeah, man, it did. It, well, yeah, and Mike got to experience that vibe as an adult. And he was like, there's no way. Like, do you imagine, like, Ellie being five years old and renting that movie in, in 1990 and being like, oh, I'm going to watch it by myself in my room with the lights off. It's just a fun, yeah. magical movie and not being, like, terrified for three weeks straight because of what yeah. she had just seen. It's going to fuck you up, kid. Yeah, it's like watching, as a five-year-old, that's like watching uh, Faces of Death Part 3. You're like, I didn't fucking see it coming. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> On Easter. Yeah, my mom and my my mom was like a huge Christian lady, and, and she never, ever would have rented that movie if she had known the kind of fucked up, crazy, disgusting, demonic shit that was going on. Mom's like, oh, no. Oh, no. We're not renting this, honey, if she had known. But she rented that movie for me, and I got, oh, my God, dude. I get it. I, I get it. It's, it. it's fucked up when you think about that. You know what would be a really fun list to do one day? This would take a lot of research and a lot of thought, but I would love to do a movie of like the top 10 movie, a list of the top 10 movies that weren't supposed to be scary, but were well, like yeah. movies that, of, and like, which is bingo. Little Monsters, probably. I like Little Monsters, but I totally yeah. get the vibe that it was like, like, uh, by the way, if you look at Little Monsters, at the boy, remember Boy? The one that was like controlling the underworld. Yeah. He was a pedophile, yeah. by the fucking way. If you guys like, there's a lot of like subtle messaging in there that he was a fucking pedophile. And then when he rips his fucking face off, like Fred Savage does, and he's like, ah, da, da, da. he looks like a drunk that ran out of money and he's going to like beg on the street for it, like a hobo. That <laughs> shit, there was something scary. And then he melts. Lou, it's fucking weird. It really is. That's a, that's a good one too. And there's just something about them, like those monsters, like grown ass monsters coming up to a little boy's bed and be like, come down to the darkness with me down below. And we'll pee another kid's orange. Or Sounds like a Hollywood casting bed. couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, also uh, bingo. Bingo would be on that list for sure. The fucking one about the dog. I love. Oh bingo yeah. I, I, I did like that movie though. I, I'll always remember it because I had the VHS tape of that and the Denver Broncos. I wasn't the dad like a, uh, player got for the, Denver from Broncos. the Broncos to the Packers. That's right. Because I remember the old school Denver Broncos helmets. He had the old school, the, the yeah. You know, and yeah. then they switched it to the Packers helmets because they had to move again. And that's how they lost bingo. But bingo mm -hmm. is just this sweet dog who has to go on this journey, just like homeward bound. Only the shit he encounters is actually scary as fuck. Like if you go back, I, I have watched to go bingo back with the watch kids. That a couple years ago, made my daughter cry. Wife was pissed at me. <laughs> he started crying. I was well, like, oh, no, no, you don't understand. Like, it has a happy ending. I swear to God. Fuck yeah. that kid up, man. It's like, like Dumbo. Exactly. Dumbo's a fucked up movie, too. The cartoon, yeah. the original one, when they smoke yeah. the fucking cigars, they all turn into donkeys and shit. It's like, they turn into <laughs> Democrats. Buckle! <laughs> There's nothing scarier than a Democrat. I'm kidding. Or a Republican. Honestly, both It doesn't sides matter. If you can vote the way you feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah jesus christ uh jordan cruz dude i love your face i love your vibe i love what you do i love everything you look like, you look like you're getting ready. He's like, i need you tonight because <laughs> <laughs> i'm not like, sleeping it looks like he's in a cure video uh mm -hmm. have you all seen the tv series from it's like a horror version of lost it's badass definitely worth a watch loves y'all's fucking hey face. man love thank you face jordan i have I'm not a... nope i don't know I what wish... that is what's it I on I more to say uh, if it's on Apple TV, I, I, I'm not doing it. I, I can't watch it. I'm not going to get another streaming service. I'm just not. I, I'm going to write it down, though. I'm going to write it down in my special, special notepad. Because I mean, I can go on the high cool. season watch it. but Yeah, I will check that out for sure, man. Uh, Dan Murphy says, is old Scabies Beard Myers from Rob Zombie Halloween going to make the cut? Me, Shell, my bell. Probably queer. <laughs> all probably mention. is. Coming <laughs> <laughs> home in the dark. I will write that down, too, because I never heard of that. Coming home in the dark. I come That's in the dark a, a lot. Coming home in the dark. Yep. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what that is, but yeah, uh, I don't think you're gonna have to worry about no old scabies, uh, beard lysit, Rob Zombie's Halloween coming in at all. I, I mean, it's like that movie never terrified me personally. It never. I. I look, here's the thing. I, I'll. I'll just like. I'm gonna spoil this for you guys. At, at least on my end. Um, the 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 uh, the main characters of the hierarchy of badass uh, killers in film uh michael myers jason Voorhees, freddy krueger they didn't make my they don't scare me like we we were putting a i was putting a list together that actually like stuck with me that fucked me up yeah those like for me when i watch a michael myers movie 
or a Freddy Krueger movie or a Jason movie. It's like watching like when's Batman coming on? Like to, <laughs> yeah. to them, like superheroes. Like I don't like I don't want to hear all your teen ass fucking drama and what's going on. You lost a few followers on TikTok. I want to know when Jason <laughs> fucks your face up. That's what that's what I want to say. Hey, Freddy's the only one who could crack the list. For he me, could though, because he could. what's scary about Freddy and he could be scary in the right essence he could be really fucked up yeah. and scary but a the fucked up way he kills you because he's like the green lantern of fucking slashers like he can just come up with whatever That's fucked true. up shit he can think of um but like also he's inescapable because he's in your dreams and you can't escape that because you have yeah. to sleep so i think freddy's actually didn't make my list either but he'd be i think he's the scariest slasher of all for the me there's a, yeah well mm, yeah well the, the, he only uh there's only two of the films i think that would even qualify would be the first and the second one that's it for Freddy. New Nightmare, a little bit. He's pretty fucked up. And yeah, the way kind of. Yeah, kind of. Five. Kinda, yeah. yeah. But I see what you're saying. Oh, and yeah, he did some fucked up shit in three, two. Yeah, but I get what you're saying. Uh, Coming home in the dark. I never heard of it, but I will say that I've definitely came in the dark more times than in the light. I think we all have more than likely. I mean, well, if you're coming really home in the dark, get some motion detectors, lights, and shit, so that well, it turns on right away when you walk up to your door. Don't you think it's weird though? Like everybody's so scared of the dark and like the dark, like like daylight saving times comes around and I get like seasonal depression because it like gets dark early. Like nobody likes nighttime, nobody likes the darkness. But also the greatest high in life is actually coming. And like the more times you came was probably at night. So you'd think that it would mix in. What if you don't have sense. someone to come into? Uh, you that's true. If you don't have someone to come in, you're probably coming. Yeah, more you gotta think the about day. the people out there that just don't have that. It's more okay. Convenient. It gets old after a while. Yeah, I'll come anytime. I'm like fucking JG Wentworth. <laughs> Eight seven seven, come now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it. Jay actually said my last name exactly right. Hey, right, man. I Fuck like yeah. It. Hell yeah. Hey, we gotta get one more in before PP time. Yeah, I got to go pee soon. Got By the way, I, I, you know what, you know what's surprising, guys? I know this is uh, out of left field. I'm gay. But yeah, we've talked. You know, look, I'll suck a dick like a Slurpee straw from 7 Eleven if I have sure. to. I don't mind at all. But anyway, what I was going to say was uh, I didn't poop before the stream today. And I mm. thought I was going to have a situation at literally five minutes into we, we were starting that I was going to be like, hey, man, I'll be right back. Oh, no. Because we, I, 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 like, I didn't. I haven't, I haven't pooped before. The, I didn't poop before the stream. I pooped earlier in the day, but maybe that was, a, I pooped a lot. So maybe that was enough to hold me over. You like that dude in American Psycho who comes back to the table and is like, they don't have a good bathroom to do coke. <laughs> no, it's my bathroom. It's clean. I promise. But I, I I was like, I pooped a lot earlier in the day and maybe it just unloaded, you know, the revolver and there's just no yeah. gunpowder. Uh, I just saw a random comment go by that I have to answer. Ethan C said, getting my first guitar on Saturday. What song should I learn mm. first? Uh, don't do like all of us. Don't concentrate on learning a song. Learn, learn chords. Learn to play it correctly before you learn the song. But no, I'm just fucking kidding with you. Brain Stew by Green Day. Mm. The easiest first song you'll ever fucking learn. I was going to say, I, I always thought the it. easiest song was Stairway to Heaven. That's weird. That's definitely not the easiest one. No, that's what? very difficult. That's crazy. That's only a 10-minute uh, solo. And then after that, learn Damn It by Blink-182, because it's just fun. Um, okay, what's your number seven, Jay? Uh, okay, so my number seven, and we were earlier talking about killers, and, and we are talking about the hierarchy of killers. For me, this is the only one that made this list, because the first time I watched it, it really did stick with me and, and scared me quite a bit, was Hellraiser. Um, <sighs> it was the first time that I'd seen a movie like that, um, ever. Um, you're talking about Doug Bradley as Pinhead. You're talking about the other Cenobites, Butterball, Chatterer, a female uh, Cenobite. They, they, they were just something really terrifying about them. The blue lighting that was used in the film as well to, uh, to, give, this, to give it a very, very much um, a nightmare quality, dreamlike state. And the fact that they were very intelligent and they were telling you exactly what's going to happen, very much like a, a parole officer when you violate your parole, bitch. This is what's going to happen to you. Uh, and it was it was scary to me. And it was dirty and it was disgusting. The very beginning of the movie with what happens to Frank Cotton, that they tore, they pull him apart. And then you remember in the very beginning of the movie where he's where Pinhead goes over to the floor and he like tries to put his face back together on the on the dirty wood floor. It immediately says, smacks you in the face like it's like it's a pimp and you owe it money. And say, oh, yeah. You're in for a treat, bitch. <laughs> you're in for a treat. You're cool. And then you get to the, then you get through the whole thing where Frank comes back and he's skinless and, and, 
and the the woman that he was having an affair with, which was his brother's wife, so fucking nasty, dude. This movie's fucking yeah. nasty. It's like bringing men over so he can like suck their brain juice out and get yeah. some skin, and, and then then he wants to fuck his niece. God damn! I was like, I, this is like the biggest. This is like the longest version of cops body camera I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> um, but then, and then when it, when she gets the deal, when she meets Cinnabites for the first time, and then the chatterer puts his like definitely picked his own butt fingers in her mouth <laughs> and like chokes her out. And then she's like, I'll make a deal with you. It's like, please, no tears. It's a waste of good suffering. I'm like, God damn, my goodness gracious. Uh, and just the way he looks, dude. It, it's a nightmare. Hell, the Cenobites themselves are literally the worst idea of what could be coming for you if you opened a fucking mysterious ass box for no reason that you bought at a yard sale. Yeah, Excellent. dude, it stuck with me. It stuck with me forever. Absolute excellent choice. I actually, I had it. It's in my honorable mentions. It's just like I. For me, it's like one of the top. It would definitely be top five movies you need to shower after. Like you, you need to, to fucking move for yourself because it just makes you feel dark and disturbed deep down inside. Uh, I totally get. I totally understand that pick. Absolutely. It's like right, watching a Ric Flair first? documentary. <laughs> what? It's like watching a Ric Flair documentary. God, that right. guy did some fucking shit. <laughs> like, yeah, he did. I love Ric Flair. I'm not saying nothing, but I mean, he... that show heals that dude on the plane that brings his dinghy out. That's based on that Rick was based Flair. on what Ric Flair did. Yeah, flight from hell or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, you want to take your PP first? I'll do my number seven. Show, show. I'll, take it. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, that's guys. That's what you fucking call time Ooh. management. We fucking manage time because we're professionals on this channel. When we pee, we schedule peas. And we have entertainment provided while we're scheduling our peas. While he's in there holding his dick right now. And I want you all to think about it. I want you all to think about it. Jay's in there holding his golden dick in his hands. And he's he's holding his golden dick in his hands. And he can feel it. And she's probably going to watch because just that's just what good relationships are like. And then he's going to hold that thing. And he's going to He's going to produce, he's going to put out all the fucking protein and excess body fluids. That's happening right now. While we're just sitting here being human beings, talking to each other, there's a fucking event happening in that room right now. A special, special thing. I can't believe it. I can almost taste it. Can you taste it? Can you taste it? My number seven is going to be... Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 uh. fire in the sky again going back to the aliens we're once again back on aliens they scare me what do you fucking want from me mom i'm so scared of aliens this movie it's it's it seems a little low on the list actually because it fucked me up so much when i watched it i think i watched it one late night on hbo parents worked a lot and like it's like home my sister she didn't pay any attention to me so i was just like off to my own you know devices all the time so I'm like in there and I'm watching this movie and it comes on and it just fucks me up. Like nothing has ever fucked me up before. I'm not lying. There's the, the most of the movie's not scary, but the one part that's scary could be the scariest thing that's ever been filmed. You watch the abduction and you watch this dude get sucked up into the aliens and he's going through all this perverse and like gross. It's like, he's like, it's like he got stuck on the honey. I shrunk the kids. My dog just hit my fucking camera. It's like he went through Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and then got stuck in, like, Ron Jeremy's fleshlight. Uh, and he's just going through all this goopy shit. And he, it's just such a nightmare. And I watched it, and I'm literally, it fucked me up so much, so much this movie fucked me up, you guys, that I literally cannot, still to this day, I take out the garbage at night, fucking, if I'm alone and, like, nobody can see me, like, I kind of, there's a little part of me that's like, you might get fucking abducted right now because no one's fucking watching you. So I got some more. Was I? It actually fucked me up enough. I was a, I was scared to be alone outside. I'd walk by a window at night. We had this window halfway through our stairs, and I would walk by it, and I would literally duck down and walk past that shit like a fucking idiot. Uh, just completely fucked me up, blew my mind. Fire in the Sky is a great movie, and we actually met. It's a funny true story. We met Travis Walton uh, at a convention where we first started the channel, and we had like barely any subs or whatever, and we're walking around, we're trying to cover this thing. Nobody's at his booth and we just walk up to him and he just talks to us for like 20 minutes. Super nice guy uh, signed a poster for us. Didn't even like charges for it. I come to think of, we probably, I, I, I think we, we, yeah, I think we gave him some cash anyway, but he signed a poster for us. 
and um just a really nice guy funny enough when we started doing interviews on the channel we messaged his people right and this is this is when i think tom the long star like aliens were like a uh it was a subject at the time and we messaged and I, I sent him an email it's like hey man we would love to have you on the show uh we met you you know it would be really cool to have you on the show we have actual you know subscribers now <laughs> and, and uh i'm not sure if i should say this or not uh but i won't say exactly what they said but it was basically like a we can do that for a certain cash sum. <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, I've never heard that before. And all the people I've ever emailed, I've never had somebody been like, yes, they will come on your show for like this certain amount of money. <laughs> so that sucks, but I get it at the same time. Um, For sure. I totally understand, you know, where that's coming from, but that just shot. It was a weird thing. I was like, damn, I thought we would definitely get you on now. You were nice to us when we had no subscribers. So uh, not a knock on him at all. Not a knock on him at all. But yeah, fire in the sky, man. One of the scariest movies that has ever existed in yours or my time. If you haven't seen it, you should totally watch it based on a true story. And I don't know why, but I believe them, yo. I just do. I just fucking do. Jacob said, by the way, love the blink jacket. Thanks, man. Wife got this for me. I appreciate it. Thank you, honey. She has headphones in because she doesn't like to hear me talk. Um, love the blink jacket. Travis said in a comment that the new album will be out by October. I seen it more beer money, dude. I'm so fucking excited. Uh, and allegedly a new single is coming out June the 2nd. Uh, our friend Stephanie's at a blink concert right now. I'm not going to mine until July, but I've watched every fucking show almost on YouTube afterwards. And it's actually really pathetic and sad. At least that's what I'm told. Uh, but I enjoy it, man. They are fucking antidepressant for me, dude. I totally get it. John Horsad says, Hey guys, they should make a movie of Jason versus the Nazis. Can you imagine? Dude, if you put this is where. I fucking I wrote an article about this not that long ago. If you put Ash in the universe and the Necronomicon in the universe of horror, it's the perfect conduit because the books can do anything. You could send Jason back to using the Necronomicon. You could send Jason back to any time you want to. So you could have Jason versus the Nazis. Imagine like Jay said, like he looks at him as like a superhero, like Batman showing up. Imagine watching Jason rooting for him, just tearing up fucking Nazis. I always root for him. I root for him no matter what. <laughs> I think that's why I, they make the fucking the campers yeah. so annoying. Well, uh, well, you uh, when you said you, when you watched um, Jason takes Manhattan, even though I know it wasn't like intentional, but when he kills the rapist, yeah, or the potential yeah. rapist, it was fun because you could feel good about rooting for him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, my number seven was Fire in the Sky. Ah, I knew I, I knew it was. Gonna, I knew I thought that'd be higher on your list. Honestly, I, I thought that was going to be high on your list. I had to tell him a little shocked. I'm a little shocked. I told the whole story about us meeting Travis Walton and all that and how crazy that was. Um, we are at in the, uh, I'll let, I'll, I'll do your number six real quick before I go. I'll put it up here. Okay. Uh, my number six is going to be, I had to change this, but I, I I'm not going to tell you guys what it was for. I'll tell you later, but it's sinister. I like that. Yes. Like a little that. different, a little different. Uh, before you talk about it, before you talk about it, when you're done with that, um, I want to see your dick. And also, we are at on super chats. I'm going to give you the timestamp. Okay. We are at 8:33 p.m. with John in. Let me oh, scroll sorry. up through here. By the way, thank y'all for coming out tonight. It's been so oh. lovely to see y'all. All y'all. So nice. Uh you, we're at John. John in, yeah. 8:33. Okay. okay. I got it. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> All right. Um, so real quick, by the way, I, I, I'll, I'll just make it brief on, on why Sinister is, uh, is my number six on the list. I feel like it was one of those movies that I watched. I wasn't expecting much. I, I felt like I was going to watch another type of, um, I don't know, like an insidious type of movie or conjuring. And even though they do kind of fall in the same kind of vein, I feel like it had something about it that made it truly disturbing with those, um, those tapes that he finds in the attic and, and he, and he starts, when he puts them the reels and he's watching them and that music and that the way it's all shot and it's creepy and and uh, all uh, Bagula. there was something about it that just unnerved me i, I don't know what it was it, it was just the super eights really fucked me up I, I hated that shit especially the the lawnmower scene the lawnmower one really got me because i didn't see it coming I think that's the only time I was like, what the fuck? And I realized the chocolate fudge factory had almost come out of my butthole when I saw it. When the when the when you saw the lawnmower going over it, and then you saw the faces. And I'm like, holy fuck. 
I'm glad I'm wearing two pair of underwear today because it was definitely a squirter almost. But anyway, yeah, it, like, and, and you know, obviously, um, um, what Ethan Hawke? Yeah, Ethan Hawke was amazing, and that, and, and you know, from that movie, I actually thought that Ethan Hawke uh, would be a great Doctor Loomis. I don't know what what it was. I just think he was a, he would be a great Doctor Loomis, and I really like the the kind of practical approach that Ethan Hawke had to the whole thing. He was kind of like, I don't believe this shit. This shit's all fake. It's all bullshit. It's not real. But the more he started researching and the more he started studying and, and the more things that were unlocking in his brain about what's going on. And the, I, I, I just, it was, it was a really well put together movie. Um, and, and, and when the ending happened and I'm not going to spoil it cause there might be some of you folk that haven't seen it yet. When the ending happened, it was really, truly like, I, I, <laughs> Did M. Night Shyamalan secretly direct some of this? I didn't see it coming. I really didn't. But great movie. Love Sinister. Scared me pretty good. Scared me pretty good. So to John N., though, he says, well, I'm broke as hell, so here's five bucks. Don't spoil your dinner. P.S. The fourth kind is terrifying. Hey, man, that's all right. Thank you so much. That's I really appreciate that. Um, you didn't have to donate nothing at all, but we really appreciate you, John N. And the fourth kind is terrifying. It is true. It is one of those movies that well we talked about it briefly uh, you didn't see it coming I mean, especially the way that they put the movie like the the tapes together and the, it, it does actually look like i was waiting on the the guy with the crazy fucking uh uh jack nicholson hair from the shining to show up from ancient aliens and be like it's real there's goddamn structures on mars like it was it, i if you put that you imagine if we didn't have the internet and you just put it on on tv or something and like nobody knew like that was like it would be like people would believe it like the Blair Witch Project they'd be like holy shit this is like the most real evidence we've ever seen of paranormal activity or uh, UFO activity which is I guess technically paranormal yeah it, it was terrifying you're absolutely correct I agree with you scrolling through the Tommy Dean says you y'all better chill out with that with with the shaft jokes before I spread your before I bend I'm engaged. I'm telling your mothers, get it up. Okay. Calm it down. Relax. Okay. The night's just begun. We've had a couple of drinks. It's okay. Don't jump the gun yet. Let's work it in. A little foreplay, Tommy. It's all right. It's all right. Just open yourself up to those thoughts. All right. But thank you so much, man. Appreciate you. Devin Reese says, hope you guys are doing good. What was the first film that both of you saw that scared you? Keep up the great work. Well, I'll uh, pass your message along to Mike. But the first movie I remember seeing that that really scared me was... Um, well, it, the, the first horror movie I ever saw in my life was Nightmare on Elm Street. I was like six or seven years old. I watched that shit and it fucking terrified me. Obviously, I was too young to watch it. But it was the pack. It was a loosey-goosey type of time different you know it was like the late 80s early 90s nobody gave a shit let them watch let the boy watch i watched that shit and it scared me a lot but as far as like the first true movie that scared me to a point where like if i watch it i'm gonna be fucked up for two weeks well that's incoming there Devin. i can't give that away but it is on the way but uh yeah nightmare on elm street was definitely a movie that that um shooey it got me it got me good Rootin' tootin' Texas tootin' coming in hot and fast. Holy shit. He says, Axum is the scariest of all time. I'm telling you, the trailer by itself will have your britches blown out. Sad it never got an Oscar. Praise Dale. Now, Texas, what the fuck you talking about, Ax? The body spray? Holy shit, you've been shopping at Target too long, rootin' tootin'. Take your ass back to Walmart. We miss you. What the fuck you talking, Axe? It ain't no scary. What's scary is your goddamn comment there, rootin' tootin'. You go ahead. You tooted your britches too much there. Come on, now. But for real, I don't know what Axe is. <laughs> I'll have to uh, Axe them. Hmm. Axe? I don't know what that is. But thank you, rootin' tootin'. Michael Parton says, see, if I was in a horror film, sadly, I would probably get killed because I'm the gay guy. Unless it's a slasher film, I could try to seduce the killer. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you you might be on. I mean, who knows? 
I mean, times are a change in there, Michael. I, I, I think you might not die early, but what if you were the killer? See, no one would see that coming at all. At all. That would be the twisty tits that we would be like, oh, the gay guy's the killer? I didn't know that. That's ridiculous. I don't think you'd die first. Not in today. No way. But you could. I don't know. But if you were in a slasher, you could seduce. Tell Jason that you, you always thought his mother was attractive, and but you've always been attracted to Jason himself, and that you're sorry for what happened to him. And let me stroke your machete. I mean, your dick. Yeah. But I don't think you'd die, Michael. There's no way. No way I'm letting that happen. Um, I, I put my earphones in, and I heard the, the first words I heard was, let me stroke your shit. I mean, your dick. <laughs> no, because Michael, Michael Parton uh, uh, commented, and he said, uh, if he were in a horror movie or a slasher film, he'd be the first to die because he's gay. But and he's like, but then, again, I could seduce the killer. And I was like, not in the days where there's no fucking way. You, well, I was like, what if you're the killer? No one would ever see it coming. Yeah, what's well, like in Scream Four when he's like, "I'm gay, I'm gay," and he's, he's like, "I mean, if it helps, because yeah. like gays don't die in horror movies, actually." So that's true. Well, uh, and there was a there was a question for you. I, by the way, I got to um, Creasefold. <laughs> that's a great fucking name. Uh, <laughs> I got to Creasefold, which is uh, Creasefold is uh, eight forty nine. Uh, but there was a question that Devin, I I answered it. I think it was Devin. Um, yeah, Devin Reese says. Uh, what was the first film that that scared you? Oh, that's a good. That's that's a good mine one, was man. Nightmare on Elm Street, just because it was the first one I watched when I was like six or seven years old. It fucked me up. I want to say that it was Night of the Demons, but I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I know that my sister and her friends came over, and they put on a movie, and I was too young to be watching it, but I was in the room and I saw parts of it, and it gave me fucking nightmares. Like it really fucked me up. Uh, mm. And I think it was Night of the Demons, but I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Uh, may have been Child's Play three, but that didn't scare me. That was just the first horror movie I saw all, all the way through. I thought so. I thought it was gonna be your um your sister's facial. We had that green <laughs> shit. It was actually my own birth. Oh my god! <laughs> I remember it. It was haunting. It was no one wants to see that. Um okay, I'll give my number six real quick mm -hmm. and we'll stay on the path of righteousness. It's the ring. And this is people are gonna be like, you mm. fucking piece of shit. That's Don't not you a say a goddamn movie. word. Out your mouth, that negative. <laughs> I I just, dude, this is the uh, the first movie I, I remember walking out of the theater from and like walking out movies nine, piece of shit theater in Winchester. It's now defunct. They changed names, that's all. But like walking out in that parking lot and it was like dusk and it was like almost dark. And it was yeah. the first movie I saw, I walked out and I just went, I don't feel good. Like I feel fucking weird inside. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like something's going to get me. And like the movie didn't, I mean, it scared me a couple times for sure. Uh, that first jump scare was amazing. The vibe of that movie is just so That's dark best, and yeah. twisted. Uh, didn't scare a lot of people. A lot of people don't think the ring's scary at all. I still think it's really fucking scary. So I yeah, know. you know, and I like I yeah, it scared the fuck out of me so bad. I won't go back and watch the original Japanese Ringu. I won't watch it because apparently that's way scarier. I mean, that it also, to be fair, has a better story based on everyone that's talked about it, but I, I won't watch it. I've that still never seen it. I need that to. movie's mean as fuck. Because there is no, like, I mean, there's obviously a protagonist in that film, but um, Samara is not a goddamn, uh, you know, victim. You find that out later in the film. Yeah, they tried that shit, didn't He's they? He's a mean-ass hoe that wants <laughs> revenge. And, uh, yeah, I'll get to my story on that shit, too, because, dude, that came out of fucking nowhere, like child support. Bitch, you mm -hmm. was pregnant? <laughs> like you didn't even know it was coming because like that opening scene like when the camera goes and then the the, the window opens up yeah, ah. yeah dude <laughs> yeah, yeah dude like that like that immediately set the tone like holy shit welcome it to gets, the ufc bitch <laughs> it gets up in you did you say you got you got crease folds you did get crease folds no i i stopped at crease folds i hadn't got crease oh. folds Oh, okay. I said, have you guys ever had to fight enemies together with your backs to each other and your butts touching and you fought them off by your butts touching? <laughs> uh, that's very specific, but uh, dude, I, that's not happened yet, but I totally would love a double dragon moment like that where we have our asses touching <laughs> and we like kick the shit out of like enemies, the shadow warriors coming from left and right. <laughs> uh, I, no, I, I wish. But, we, we, we almost got in a couple bar fights back in our day. Um, that well, With each other, usually. Not with like other people, which is a, yeah, not bad. Yeah. It's more like, we were like more like Double Dragon 1. 
than Double Dragon too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were yeah. basic. We like to fuck face to face. Yeah, it's like, hey, who are you gonna fight at the end of the at the end of the game? You fight your own brother? Damn, it's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 hard if you're dudes like you want to look each other in the eye while you're fucking but it's hard like you know systematically you know you know what i mean like think about yeah. it it's tough it's tough yeah i mean, I mean tough. if you if you if, 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 if there was ever a moment we we got we found ourselves in a roadhouse situation don't you think that me and mike wouldn't back up and touch assholes so that oh, we yeah. could fight and do karate kicks against the bad guys i i you know i kind of i kind of now that I'm thinking about it, I'm kind of thinking that maybe we should because I feel like we need. Yeah, let's that just start fighting. We'll just start a fighting in 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 rooting tooting Texas and part of town and <laughs> and fucking we'll do it to it. Clinton said, "Do it at Scarefest." Who knows that could happen? Sit in a booth. Anything could happen. Um, okay, where 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 the fuck? Uh, I'm gonna pop this off in just a second. Pop this, let me pop this thing off real quick. Uh, Jack Ryan Boyd said, "As a kid, that my centennial man scared me." Talk about I, like, I can that see that. Yeah. Scary. The, the yeah the robin williams movie that actually well i liked it i liked it because i i took it for what it was i like and it came out what that came out like late 90s it seems about right or early yeah. 2000s at the very but least. i love robin williams anyway I, the, actually the, the uh, but i can see why it would fuck you up but at the same time i think the movie that robin williams did that fucked me up more was uh um what dreams may come when he goes to heaven and then his wife commits suicide and then he has to go into hell with cuba gooding jr to get her out that shit was fucking gnarly there's something about, and I think that was always part of his comedy too. There's something about Robin Williams that is like, there was always that, and not just because of the unfortunate things that happened, but there yeah. was always a sadness to him. So when he did those serious movies like Insomnia, that's why it worked for him. He could do comedy, but he, he could also do some serious roles because there was just like a deep thing to him, you know? Yeah. So I why Centennial Man might have been ahead of its time though? Because it's like literally yeah. AI and robots taking over and having human emotions. Like, am I real? I am a lie, Stephanie. Do not dissimilate. You know, it was, ooh, I don't know. But yeah, um, Jack, also, Jack's one hour photo, one hour photo was, that's where the he's, one. A, yeah. he's a killer. I totally yeah. get that. I totally get where you're coming from on that, man. Um, Ryan Estrada says the changeling, 1980s, George C. Scott's great. Never seen that. Dude. Never, I got to watch it. Stop looking at my list, Ryan Estrada. <laughs> Oh yeah, well, like, dude, yes, I I can't get into specifics with you, my good sir Ryan Estrada, but you are correct. It is an amazing movie. George C. Scott is a fucking legend, not only because he played one of the best roles ever in Patton, but because he was awesome in this movie, and there was a realism about that. I don't know. We'll get into it later, but thank you, Ryan. <laughs> Excellent choice, sir. I've never seen it. I need to watch it. I do. Christopher Sampson. I want to talk to Sampson. Fly me to the moon. <laughs> that bitch, Alex Cranston. <laughs> this Rocky, yeah. Rocky Four soundtrack. How can we forget James Brown hit song "Living in America"? Right. Station, the station. <laughs> That's great. I uh, feel good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway i'm still at work i'm going to race home to watch the stream have a great night everyone hey thank you christopher uh yeah dude uh living in america that's a great ass song and it was also had a great ass opening because uh apollo comes down with the the george washington or, or the i guess it would be the abraham lincoln top hat and he's got the fucking flag and the colors flying dude it was the, i you like listen if it was real life if that was an actual true life uh hbo boxing match and a dude came in like that you couldn't help but love him you'd be like this yeah. motherfucker loves america he don't give a shit about he's like i'm i'm in i'm in it i'm in it for a penny for a pound and i'm having a good fucking i'm gonna take this russian down dude he, he yeah that that man those fights feel real. Like when you think about, like they were so deep, like and, and yeah. serious. Like I feel like when Apollo was dying, I, was, I felt that shit, man. I was like, yeah. no. <laughs> like, when Apollo time. died, we all died. We felt like rock. <laughs> Don't dead town. Don't dead town. JT Grogan says, "What's a movie that you've expected to be scary but ended up being a total letdown?" Oh, there's tons, man. Um, well, I don't want to say that because, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, not a letdown, but a misdirection. It totally went south end, and I'm like, okay, well, this is fun. Uh, was Cabin in the Woods. I expected the, the way that the trailers had portrayed that movie and leading up to that movie, I thought it was going to be a standard horror film that's filmed. In, you know, everybody was like, oh, it's an Evil Dead ripoff. I thought it was going to be very much like that, and I was like, totally expecting that. But it was a letdown as far as not being horror, like a horror movie. 
but it was awesome. Like it was awesome in in the most unexpected way. Like when you find out that her vagina is still tight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! I only thing I can think of off the top of my head, man. There, there's been a thousand of those movies. I think we've all had that sensation. New sensation. New uh, sensation. I, the the Grudge remake was one. I think we both expected that to be scary, and that was a that was a dull the, piece. Yeah, of shit. yeah. Uh, the, the, the new the ring, the ring. No, 3D. the Grudge. No, the Grudge from like a couple years ago. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one sucked, yeah. It's super forgettable. That's the thing. Um, um. Oh, I was gonna say dude. Evil Dead the remake. We th yeah, but eventually we were that like, was oh, overhyped no, hell. Oh, we love no. I thought it was great, but it was a letdown because they were like, people gonna fucking pass out. Like, bitch, I came to party. I thought I was gonna be like on the fucking gurney, and what the fuck happened? <laughs> like, I, like they I, like, oh, people were passing out in the aisles and shit, and the ambulances had to come. Yeah, I I'll, uh, you know I'll say the Conjuring. I'll say the Conjuring, and because still, even mm. on rewatch, I can watch that movie today. I, every time I try to watch the Conjuring, I go. I'm going to watch this and I want to feel and I want to experience what everybody yeah. else is feeling experience. And I watch and I just go not nah, seeing that shit a thousand fucking pounds just does not do anything for me. So I'll say, that yeah, again. well, I, I don't think, it, well, you know, for me, may, uh, you know, Mike's be like, no way, dude, <laughs> no way, bro. <laughs> I'm so I was going to, I, I was going to say hereditary. So I was going to say hereditary. I was going to say hereditary. And I know why I was going to say it because Mike was the one that got mad when I was like, I didn't think it was that big a deal. I was like, dude, I knew it. I knew that I'd say that, and you'd watch it on with subtitles. You'd be like, "Wasn't that big of a deal?" <laughs> Even though I do like Tony Collette, I think Tony Collette was phenomenal in that film. But it, it's different with you, Jay. It doesn't really fucking count with you, dude. Because what Jay does, what he thinks he's going to be scared of a movie, he goes and looks up every goddamn detail about it. I didn't. So they, I, no, no, they, okay, I did. <laughs> I know. Okay, you, I did. Man. I, I wouldn't okay. believe you. But, it, I, but if I school, if it was still scary, if the atmosphere like got me, it would still be fun. But you also <laughs> told me everything that was going to happen. Like you, you, you told me the whole movie. Like you were a line director for it. You like, wanted to know. You asked. And you I know, know that's you true. Idiot, that shit. Anyway, but yeah, no, it's like it's it's one of those. It's not the same. It's not the same if you know. But yeah, uh, Hereditary. Actually, I'll say this now. Did not make my list. I know it made a lot of people's list. Dude, I'm actually shocked. I thought it was like oh, going to be your top five. It seems too like I feel like fucking Lars from Metallica. No, it's too stock, dude. It's too stock. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not punk rock enough, dude. Uh, mm. No, I just I feel like it is scary and it is fucked up. It just I I I was a victim to that too. As fucked up as that movie because I watched it alone in the middle of the day next Way to some up. other dude who Way was alone. But like, yeah, it was that the hype got me. Uh, so, so it never really scared me the way. But it is on my honorable mentions because it was well scary. What was the other one? Midsummer's Night, every or Midsummer's whatever. The, it was like it was the same shit. Everyone's like, "Oh my god, it's the worst." I I actually watched that movie. And I'm like, this just fucking gross. <laughs> like yeah. it just it, it like it it looks like a goddamn a Davidian cult in, in in Texas. I I mean, obviously there's a lot of fucked up things going on, but yeah, I've seen worse shit. Okay, I was married to an ex whore, so I understand <laughs> real life horror. I see some shit, <laughs> see no. some shit. but no, That's but I will. Well, I was going to say about Hereditary, there's only one scene in that movie that fucks me up is when the kid is sleeping after he gets his nose broke and she's like in the corner hiding like Spider-Man. And then she silently like run, like runs and she's like, I'm like, yeah. ah! like <laughs> that fucking got me. That part got me. I, I didn't care about her banging her head on the attic wall or naked people standing around him. Well, old dudes dicks always get me. They do. Uh, but like, like hard. One scene, yeah. <laughs> I think the, sc <laughs> the scariest scene in Hereditary is actually when the kid's upstairs and sleeping. He's like, he knows what he fucking did. You know what you fucking did. And he's yeah. just trying to pretend it didn't happen. Oh, uh, yeah. And, that's like, up, yeah. and Tony Collette goes out to the car and opens the door. <laughs> and because there's yeah. something fucking realistic about that. Like, if anybody who's had like bad shit like this happen, I've had it happen, but it's a different situation because it was like, it was a horse. But like, still, it's, it's very yeah. fucking. Uh, you and the uh, Godfather? When you put the horse's head, <laughs> no, you put the horse's head in your bed. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we got. I woke up. Uh, uh, so my dad used to be on. Uh, he used to. My dad fucking worked away from the house a lot. He was gone for like months at a time when I was growing up working and shit. So like sometimes what I would do is, is I would sleep on the floor in my mom's room. And my sister would sleep in the bed. Um, and it I sounds like on Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. It says a lot about yeah the, the <laughs> kind of the relationship. I got the fucking floor, but like. I we used to board our horses and my mom and sister were fucking crazy about it. Like they love fucking horses like more than anything. And we we boarded a horse and we they got a phone call at like 5 a.m. that the horse had died. 
Yeah. It, it bent over to a well to get a drink of water and it fell in and broke its neck, which is actually really sad. Yeah. Um, but like the way that they wail, waking up to that kind of wailing, like screaming, like it's fucking haunting. And imagine. Oh, you, oh they, wo- they, who woke up? Your I sister? woke up to them scream cry. Oh, Both yeah. That, well, yeah. What happened? Two, two women uh, screaming. It's like, I didn't touch nobody. <laughs> this is my Saturday night. I didn't touch nobody. <laughs> That's just my Saturday, dude. Uh, but no, uh, that was fucked up. So like, but that's what kind of what they reminded me of hearing her wail from the car when she's like screaming in the grief. Yeah. I think hereditary is scary in a totally different way. It's scary in like a, an emotionally different way, but it still made my fucking, you know. Yeah, well, well when the, 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 uh, the decapitation scene was gnarly just because it happened so fast. And then mm-hmm. he looks back, and his head and his sister's got no head, and he's like, "I got to go to Taco Bell and get <laughs> yeah, a burrito." I'm so high right like, now. Like, like, damn, dude, I, I'm too high for this shit right now. <laughs> like, it, it, like, it, you know, like it's a very serious matter. But when you're that drunk and high that he was, like, it, yeah, like it just doesn't compute with what just happened. I think no. it's shocked too. Uh, but yeah, it was, a, it was a fucked up scene. But dude, again, uh, Tony Collette, uh, all praise to her without her that movie would not have been nearly what it was no no that's true she was fucking amazing in that man uh colton candler what's up dudes y'all see that old dude drop is coming to scare fest oh dude katie just told me that yesterday and i was like oh uh, i'm that i'm actually gonna break my rules oh yeah Dewey, never... yeah I yeah Dewey, or Dewey arquette david arquette's coming to scare fest where we're gonna be we're gonna have a booth dude imagine we go outside and smoke a cigarette that's why do i literally i literally told april that i was like you better start learning how to smoke <laughs> yeah. you, stay out, you stay out there and you smoke cigarettes yeah i was like I, cause i'm not i mean i might be like hey can you come meet my wife she's a big fan he's like nah does she have marlboros <laughs> like nah like i'm not interested oh by your wife you mean me because i'd fucking cream my jeans dude i would love to fuck i'm actually i i'm i'm gonna do it for the first time i've never fucking paid a celebrity for an autograph or a picture before i've never done it yeah all the conventions we've been to I've always just felt like it just feels cooler if like it's yeah. by chance happenstance. Uh, no disrespect to anybody that does that, but I'm gonna break my rule, dude. I will pay, get in line, and just to take a picture of that guy. I I, I fucking love Dave Arquette so much. I, I, I think I would I, I should have done it uh, last because uh, I I really did want to get uh, uh, what's his name's autograph uh, Pumpkinhead Bishop from Aliens Lance Henderson. I wanted his autograph. I should have got that. I just didn't want to. I I'm I'm so fucking cheap, dude. I'm like, well, if I put the money towards an autograph, how much money am I going to have left for beer? <laughs> I get it. God. Well, it's like, well, when uh, uh, Jason, Pat- not Jason Patrick, fuck, um, the dude from Fire in the Sky um, and Peace. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, can't think. T-1000. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'd pay the fucking nickel soul. Uh, motherfucker better pay me to take a picture with him. No, uh, Travis but Walton. when he walked by and he had that giant bird hair, it was like fucking way up here. Oh, Robert Patrick, dude. Yeah, Robert, Robert Patrick. Patrick. He walked by our booth yeah. with his leather jacket and his hair fucking way up like it was for Peacemaker. We were like, me and Jay fucking geeked out. Like, dude, I did. I, I was excited. I, I wanted to be like, Robert. But then I was like, I was afraid he'd be like, he would actually answer it and turn around and be like, yes. I'm like, I right, nothing. I would fr- I, like, I would freeze then. Like, he looked like, Robert Patrick, when he walked by our booth and he had this aura about him and his hair was all cool and shit, yeah, and it looked like he used rave hairspray, like the <laughs> like the aerosol can. He looked like the gym teacher from the faculty. He had this aura of intimidation about him, and I didn't want to like disturb his thoughts. Oh, but I, about we we passed him. We went. Uh, me and Mike went and talked to Felissa Rose, and he was right there. And he was like telling he was telling a very animated story to somebody in line. I'm like, God damn it. I want to go over there and listen to what he's saying. Like he's Get a street here, preacher. <laughs> like, uh, he said, Jay, after hearing you talk about the old Marvel selects and legends, the the action figures, uh, I bought a couple. They are so cool. Dude, those they are, are man. the best. I love them. I, I wish I had the balls the to open ones, them up right? and like this one. Huh? The Marvel the selects, selects are the ones the- I have on the wall, uh, the bigger ones, the ones that best you toys. like. Yeah. Best toys. I love You're going to get, I mean, uh, Marvel Legends has uh, more variety, 1000% more variety. And there are articulation uh, that you can make the figure do uh, some cooler shit than the le- than the uh, selects. But I feel like the selects have, in my personal opinion, I like the big, the, the bigger, chunkier like figures that you can look and you can hold and you, and and you can. I think they're cooler, and I feel like there's more um, artic not articulation, more detail, in my opinion, in Marvel Select. But yeah, dude, they're they're fucking great. I love. I just don't have the balls to open them and play with them myself. I wish I could play with you. <laughs> like if I live near you, I'm like I'm gonna come over to your house. And we're gonna set it all up. 
We're gonna set up exactly a, the, the the scene that we need. That's that's a stream we should do. Like one day, let's just we're gonna go over Jay's house and we're gonna tie. No, dude, you bed. told me one time you like if I told you I was opening open up if, all if, his if toys. you you said. If I ever heard that you were opening up your Marvel selects or your figures, I would send a, a, like a, a check on you from the police. <laughs> like a like there was something check. wrong. Because I don't open my I don't open my figures. I, I open a few. I've got some figures out on display, but um, not my Marvel selects. Not my Marvel selects. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Dean said, "What's both y'all's favorite wrestler slash actor?" Ooh, that's a toughie. That's a good one. But uh, he, does he have to be an actor? I think so. I think that's the parameters. Yeah. Um, there's Ratty Roddy. There's fucking. I think. Well, you'd have to pick the Rock. I mean, the Rock is the most versatile. Uh, I you know definitely not for me. Like, I don't love the Rock as an actor. I love the Rock as a wrestler. Don't love him as. He's an the actor. best actor out of all of them, though. He's the best. But what's your favorite? So anybody who's been in. A movie okay, well then, I, if I'm gonna pick my favorite, then the one that I enjoyed the most growing up was Hulk Hogan. I loved Mr. Nanny, Suburban Commando, Thunder, yeah. Thunder in Paradise. I, I just feel like he started acting at, at the wrong time and he picked really corny ass movies. Who the fuck? I, I, I'm missing like a How are you not picking John movie? Cena, dude? I like John Cena. I, I never liked John Cena. I like John Cena as an actor, never liked him as a wrestler. Like the but for the uh, Suicide Squad thing and all that stuff. No, he's, I think he's him and Batista are some of my favorite actor wrestlers, but like both combined. I'm missing someone grand, like someone before The Rock. Who was Jesse Ventura amazing... was badass in Predator. Jesse Ventura was a great one. Um, bunch of slack jawed fuckers. What's he say, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh, this, look, this 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 shit will put hair on your chest. What's wrong, <laughs> Dylan? See, I got you pushing too many pencils. Oh god, who is it? There's a there's a huge fucking actor. I'm just gonna fucking say. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Macho Man because I he's love never, Macho Man. He's one of my favorite like wrestlers. The big, and he was, you like the Slim Jim commercials, <laughs> <laughs> the Slim Jim commercials, and and Spider Man's like Bone Saw is ready. Ooh. Yeah, like I'll say Macho Man. That's what, well, Macho Man never really had a. Well, I guess you could call him an actor. He did do the Slim Jim commercials, and he was technically in the. You can, I can't believe you're not gonna pick Hulk Hogan. I mean, if you're I, not gonna I, pick The I Rock, you gotta it. pick Hulk Hogan. I respect it, and I love I love Hulk Hogan's fucking performance. I don't honestly with No Holds Barred, that whole movie's fucking hilarious. That's a great movie, yeah. With that whole movie, Zeus. Great. Zeus. <laughs> 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 well, what a fucking great question, man. Uh, Austin, thanks, buddy. We appreciate that, man. He said I saw Possession last week, and people hyped up the scary too much. There was young Alan Grant, a very loud, insane woman, lots of screaming, a hilarious, sexy German man. <laughs> that dude's fucking hilarious, by the way. That German dude. <laughs> Uh, an Uncle Frank monster and confusion. That's about it. Did you ever see that one? Possession? No, that sounds like a Roman orgy that I'm glad that I wasn't invited to. <laughs> like... It got banned or whatever. It got like lost or something. And Shutter just brought it back recently. And they just did it on the last drive in with Joe Bob Briggs. I watched it like the I think I put a Patreon. I think when I put it come out? On, the, on the Patreon. It came out in like the 80s or something or the 70s. Oh. Sam Neill, I believe. Right. I think Sam Neill. He uh, looks like sure. a freak. He'd be in it. Uh, yeah, fucked up movie, dude. Fucked up. I won't say anything because I don't want to spoil it, but crazy ass was it good? And it it was not enjoyable to watch. Um, mm. and I agree, it's not scary, it's just really fucked up. There's did you get scene, hard? Like a turkey cutter. Um, did you get hard a once times, a little a couple bit? Couple times, okay. possibly. Well, there's a scene where a monster is like fucking this chick. It's just oh my god, mm. it's crazy. It's a dark, twisted fucking movie, dude. Damn, Austin, um, what are you? Well, you've been spending your Saturday nights. <laughs> <laughs> what your kids don't like falafel? <laughs> Thank you, Austin. Appreciate it, man. By the way, do you guys, like, I'm sure that, obviously, you guys are smart, but what, did, did you not, did you ever know what a fucking falafel was until you saw, I, I had to look it up. No, I ate one, though. How you, Tastes like chicken. When did you eat one? I ate one. They have like those. Uh, they have all these Mediterranean places in. Lexington I gotta be honest. You ate a taco. It wasn't a falafel. You racist bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I had to look, but no, I had to look it up. I didn't know what a falafel was. I and I was like, oh, well, because because when when uh, when the, the the dude from uh, Batman Begins grabs the falafel and he starts, he, it looks like a fucking uh, gyro. <laughs> I think it's is it a hero is it hero hero? No, no, but it was like a burrito sandwich, and he was like, "Come on, my my kids got to eat. They, they don't like falafel." <laughs> no, but I, I, it looked like a burrito I, thing. You took it from I don't know. 
Uh, but all I know is like I can't taste really the difference in it, but it's good. It tastes like kind of tastes like someone put a chicken finger in a Isn't fucking it, it's, it's, it, a pita. It's Greek though, right? I think it's Greek. Yeah, it's Greek. Mediterranean wow. Greek. So one of those things. So but when you open love... it up, there's a dick inside of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's, it's a my dong. Part. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's the best part. Yeah. But no, some of those shops, they have one in the mall. If you go to the mall, they have a, a little shop in there. It's got some good food. That tzatziki sauce is good, too. You can dip your shit in there. Ah. Um, libertarian homos. <laughs> what? You guys it's have not... matching. Yeah, you, had, you basically have matching profile pictures with Mike in his <laughs> sleeveless shirt. Like, libertarian homo looks like he's waiting for you in the gates of heaven. I was thinking vegetarian homo. I was like, well. You know, whatever. Uh, you think meat would be on the table. Uh, <laughs> speaking of gay, nothing confirms my homosexuality more than Mike in a sleeveless shirt. Hey, you know, if you can like me in a sleeveless shirt, then you're right. You could probably like any man in a sleeveless shirt. <laughs> it the makes the question, right. did Mike know libertarian homo was in the chat lurking around and therefore changed into a sleeveless shirt? This I think he did. And by the way, he also looks like the guy that said, with the face that libertarian homo has, is he's like, you want to suck my dick first? <laughs> Okay. No, you suck my dick. It's fine. <laughs> That's what that picture says. It's fine. Uh, I, 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 I appreciate it, man. Uh, uh, not, not uh, in the best shape of my life. So I'll take, the, I'll take the fucking hits I can get. Um, hey, all right. Well, you so, put the sleeveless shirt on. You want it? I didn't go put it you on. It, it was under my hoodie. I was just wearing it. All right. Oh. I, I wasn't like they're gonna like this. <laughs> well, I don't. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can um, smell your bo from here. I, yeah, yeah. Well, I put on, I put on, I showered just before this. It's okay. It's fine. We're going to be I safe. I did too. Um, number five. Are you, you? Okay, it's my turn. Uh, my yeah. number five is going to be, um, you know, and again, this is going to maybe rub some people's crotch a little bit wrong because they're like, how so. the fuck is it on the number five list? Stir of Echoes for me was extremely <laughs> fucking disturbing. Oh, I like it. Yeah, uh, listen, uh, I never expected to see Kevin Bacon in a horror movie. I know that he had done Flatliners, and he had done a couple of movies that were on the border. Tremors, maybe, but I don't consider Tremors a horror movie. But Stir of Echoes was, it was like a regular guy, right? He worked at a factory, I think. I can't remember his actual job. And he was just, like, drinking a couple of beers, hanging out at a party one night. And this crazy fucking tarot-reading bitch was like, hey, let me fuck with your brain. I read some goddamn books and I got some hypnosis shits to give you. And he was like, yeah, fuck it. I'm drunk. Let's do it. And then she opened his brain up and he seen some shit. And then for me, what, what, what disturbs me is the fact that in his house up to that point, before that point, he had seen a lot of weird shit, like, you know, things moving around or whatever. And then when he sees the girl that, that was, uh, I can't say, I don't want to spoil this movie for people that haven't seen it. Cause there are some people who probably haven't seen this movie. Um, but when he sees things, you know, but he sees the, he sees things beyond what he should be seeing. them. He's not ready for that. Like, you know what I mean? He wasn't born with this gift. Um, and I consider, I'm I would, I would consider, I would consider it a gift if you saw it, but you know, some would argue against it, but I, I think it's, shit. no, <laughs> no, I know. That's what's terrifying. Is like he was just he was just fucking drunk at a party, and this bitch fucking played with his mind and opened his third eye or whatever. And we barely <laughs> understand, goddamn, yeah, well, not his dick. I'm sure he wanted that. He'd rather have oh, that than what happened. Things. But uh, yeah, but you know, played with his brain. We don't even we don't even know where dreams come from. Not really. And then she was playing around and was mind like she was like doing a pogo stick in his brain, like, you're going to see some things. Open your brains up. <laughs> and then he sees this ghost world. Dude, I think the part that there's a there's multiple parts of this movie that actually disturbed me. Um, there's one scene where he's sitting on the couch, I think. I don't know. I can't remember. And she, I can't say it. Well, no, you know what? I'm going to say it. I can't, I mean, I, you don't, yeah. There, there's the, the girl ghost is like mad at him. Because he's not following through. He's not doing what he should be doing. And she's like, ah, 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 in the fucking movie theaters. Like she's up. Uh, and I'm like, God, dude, like, because it comes out of nowhere. Like the, the camera angle is moving like this. It's moving really slow through the movie theater. And then she's like, ah, like she's screaming. And then the camera zooms in on her fucking dumb shit face. Like she's a drunk <laughs> whore on fucking Sunset Boulevard. And you're like, oh my God, you didn't see it coming. And then. Yeah, dude. Like, and then the 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 very ending of the movie. Okay, I won't give this part away. The very ending of the movie with the gunshot that goes up through the 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 
the pillow and the feathers because that was a big thing that they warned them about. Dude, I feel like Stir of Echoes was on, in my opinion, it it it, it was a contender for uh, six cents, in my opinion. And it was just buried under the hype. 100% underrated. I, I love that. It didn't make my list, but like it's 100%. Because I don't find it that... Like I find it far more entertaining than I do scary, but I could totally get where it could scare, where, where it could be scary. But like I fuck, you know I love that movie, dude. Well, you yeah, but I, I, I feel like where the reason why I'm even talking to you about it is because you're like, I do Ouija boards made by fucking Parker Brothers. Let's fuck with that. Let's fuck with that. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to fuck with that. It does feel like something that could actually happen. It does feel realistic in that way. I I, I totally get yeah. that. Uh, such a good fucking movie, dude. I love that movie yeah. so much. Um. My number five is gonna be the shining. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it when you you set up your hotel on this the on the call color of the Rockies. When Jay spreads his butt cheeks, that's what I call it the shining because a, a, a golden light. I was just gonna say when anus. I like do this to my hair, it just it falls out like snow. <laughs> so much standard for him. <laughs> shining's weird because like the first time i watched it it's one of those movies i think it was i think i watched it the first time with you i think mm -hmm. me you and cody sat on your bed together jerking each other's wieners as young children and we watched it together and maybe it was just the 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 masculine hands on my cock while i was watching it but it just did not get me at all like it did not scare me and i was so disappointed because i'm like this is the shining jack nicholson with an axe you saw the yeah. images never saw the movie but then watched the movie and was just like that shit wasn't scary went back and watched it as an adult who loved it to have his wiener stroked and you know paid attention to it and the yeah. the aura and the mood and the sound and the way those shots are so lined up and the weird random shit that would happen like opening up a door and seeing some dude in a bunny costume sucking a bear's dick and like fucking like all the shit that would happen in that movie it got to me it was like, like comic-con in san diego yeah, it was like it was like our first bar mitzvah. Yeah, uh, wow, it was that looks up. familiar. It was so weird and strange and perfectly shot, and it just had this underbelly of like horror in it that it just it's 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 I don't know. I, it's one of those you watch it, you don't know why it's scary, but it just somewhere deep in your tendrils, it just tickles them. The music also, the music, the music, yeah. music like takes you to like yeah, it's disturbing. That the music the feels opening. disturbing. Yeah, just them driving down that road, and, and the dad's like being all normal, but you know he's not going to stay normal. And he's like, I'm yeah, he's always on the edge. Yeah, uh, maybe it's just the fear of our fathers bothering them while they're yeah. working that makes it so scary for us. Yeah, he definitely reminded me of my my real dad that was you know coach soccer. That's yeah. exactly how he acted. <laughs> yeah. What do enough. you mean, son? You're not going to sign up for soccer? Are you some <laughs> kind of pussy? But yeah, shining, I am, shining is I am. it's. It's scary on a level you don't really understand why it's scary. Like it's smarter than I am. I just know it freaks me out a little bit. So, uh, yeah. Well, those shots were amazing, and 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 the music was awesome, and, and the, um, the I mean the scenery alone. I mean, and I totally, uh, like you got you got to give it up to Stanley Kubrick, dude. He knows how to shoot a shot. A hundred percent, dude. Like, yeah, like that's just it. Like I think it was like the way he shot shit that made it so fucking terrifying. It did that, and like, like I to well, let me say this. Like I totally get. If, if someone looked at me like, dude, that movie's not scary at fucking all. What are you talking about? I'd be like, I know. I get it. No, I, I understand why you wouldn't that. think it was scary. But to me, it's scary. Like, it just feels like you're doing something. I feel like it's one of those things, like, I feel like it's scary because it's like you see, like, as a viewer watching the movie, you witness someone going insane. Yeah. And they go insane to a point where they're going to kill their own fucking family. And, 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 you know, you could chalk it up. You could chalk it up to the fact that Maybe those aren't even supernatural beings. Maybe they're not even ghosts. These are just um, paranoia thoughts that this crazy fucking guy that's been off alcohol for a while that is starting to have. I mean, of course, there are ghosts because uh, Shelley Duvall and and, uh, and 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 Danny see it. But if they hadn't, you can make this movie where it's just the guy experiencing this mass uh, paranoia. And, and hysteria and then that's scary in of itself like you imagine if you're um the shelly duvall character uh wendy and you're danny in this situation and you have a recovering alcoholic as a husband and a father who is fucking possessed by this internal rage to in you fuck dude that that i mean 
you don't need ghosts. Like the, the, the idea alone, just that idea alone is scary enough. I am afraid of some ghosts. Sorry, I had to change my my battery, my battery. Right. Uh, but I totally agree with you, man. Like, yeah, it feels wrong and sexual in a dark and twisted kind of way. It kind of sure. makes me hard for you. Sure. What? Sure. Right now? Sure. Sorry. I will. Whatever. Six, six, six says, hey, brothers, scariest movie for me is Hereditary. Uh, get it. Get it. Fuck people up. I think a lot of people have, yeah. Uh, well, I, I feel like Hereditary was one of those movies that came out of, like out of nowhere, and it, it, it shook people up in the right way. Thank God for a movie like Hereditary. So because it, it actually got people more up. interested in horror again that had been missing. Because I feel yeah. like before Hereditary, you hadn't had any kind of thing that was like, oh, shit, that's fucking awesome. You hadn't really had and it in a while. And another point to be made there also is that fucking... Again, when we're making this list, it's so hard to make. There are so many less films that actually scared us than you would have thought. Mm. So when someone comes out with a movie like Hereditary, that's actually like most movies. It feels like most horror movies. Like, I don't know if it's that they don't try hard enough to actually scare you or they're just trying to make an entertaining movie. And I feel like these days we accept movies for what they are. Back yeah. in the day, we used to get really pissed when they weren't actually scary. But like. It's so rare a movie comes out that actually even has potential that you're actually sort of scared to watch. That doesn't really happen. You kind of go for entertainment now. Uh -huh. Hereditary being so recent, they really do need to make more movies where they're actually shooting for the stars and trying to fuck you up. I think that is maybe as good I'll as we're doing. That's I'll maybe agree. the one thing it's missing. I know you don't like that shit. No, I, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. I no, I I, no, it. I fucking hate it too. And I hate it. I I hate the worst of these goddamn directors. They're like, we're gonna do some jump scares. We're gonna do some jump scares today yeah. because fuck too it. Many jump scares. And then I get mad as fuck in the theater if I'm going to see the film and there's, I feel like unneeded jump scares. Like you piece of shit, untalented director that you have no story whatsoever that you're gonna. Do a goddamn jump scare just so I can shit my pants and embarrass myself in front of my male date. friends and family. I don't want it. <laughs> but you got me, so kudos. Kudos yeah, to you. But I, I know there's always a uh, begrudging respect. <laughs> respect. I don't want to give it to him, but I'm like, all right, fine, you got me. Respect. Like, it's like after i rage i'm like all right fine you got me <laughs> mike parton thanks dude says love you and your johnson's better than Dwayne's. hey thanks our we'll johnson's it, need we'll take all the love they can get yeah Dwayne's you know? not doing I mean, so well there's a lot of uh things going on there oh no oh no don't please please share <laughs> share with the class i want to see it Show it to me. 666 says, Mike, would you ever consider uploading the Wham songs on YouTube? Also, would you other have Jay's have would you ever have Jay's brother on a stream? Jay's been, uh Cody's been on the stream before. Uh, go back and look at the stream? No, he, no he wasn't on a live stream. No. He popped in your room one time. But we 666, you're stream. you're rapidly losing favor with me. Uh quickly, if you're gonna say that shit. Uh, and I'll take you back to the devil's cunt and you can stay there. You're gonna keep saying that. Shut the fuck up. What, what do you say? My brother's not in part of the stream, and he never will be. How <laughs> dare you come to me? I'm co-owner of this goddamn channel, you fucking goddamn maggot. I don't know. Take your ass back to Hillscape and shut I'm the so fuck up. I'm so no, I'm scared kidding. right now. No, I'm kidding. Uh no, he's been on the he's he's actually been on, on videos before. Uh, mm -hmm. Cody's not really about, uh, he doesn't really want to do that kind of shit. So, I mean, he, I mean, he, I'd be, I, I will, we talked about having a Patreon stream or some shit like that not long ago, but I don't know just, if he'd ever do it. It's too much sexual tension, um, between the three of us, uh, you know, mainly, mainly between me and the two of you. Uh, well, the fact really is when Cody gets on, well, here's the thing. If Cody gets the, 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 the God's juice flowing through him, which is alcohol, we don't know. We don't the know where it's live. We don't know where it's going to end up. The train might end up in a dark part of town, and we're going to be singing Josh Black's uh, Long Black Train. <laughs> don't go riding on that long black train. They have like, spoken in, in, in cult circles in the Midwest that when the three of us get together and we are drinking, it is an unholy triumvirate from which there is no escape and dark things happen to good people. Yeah. Uh, Cody's, uh, 
Cody's a <laughs> hidden character in fucking Mortal Kombat. You got to do like the right combinations to get Reptile. <laughs> our, 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 <laughs> our energies connect, and they 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 do yeah. very bad things uh, at times. Yeah, you but... don't want to do that. Like, listen, I like Cody's great. I mean, Cody's a fun guy to hang out with for sure, and and he's got a lot of movie knowledge. But at the same time, he's not really a a live, you know, like be on live stream kind of guy. That being said, uh, if you do, if we did do like we did the old school, the original Halloween reviews we did. Cody was in there. Cody played Myers, Michael Myers, in yeah. some of our most popular skits that we did. Um, and you'll tell because well, the problem is video. I don't, I don't want, I don't, yeah, the li- but having him on the live stream where people come in and they might say something that he doesn't like. See, the problem is Cody has, uh, Cody's goddamn Ron DeSantis. He don't give a shit. <laughs> Like, he might change the whole laws of the universe and just say it the way that it, it might be, and you'd be like, "Well, you might have, you might have a, shh, a little, shh, a little, like, shh, stop, shh, stop." <laughs> uh, uh, as far as as far as the songs go, actually, yeah, um, I, well, I don't know, like, it's weird. I was thinking about that. So, actually, a couple of songs are on there. The emo Michael Myers song is a video that's on there. Did that for Halloween Horror Month once. The um. The white face fucker song is the intro, so that's technically on YouTube as well. And then um, the what was the last one? The um, Halloween Never End song. That's just that's only on audio. I'm working on a scream song right now. I don't know what's what's going to come of that, but I'm working on that. It's about how Billy and Stu were secretly fucking. So that one should mm. be really fun. Uh, really excited about that. But eventually, at some day, I would love me, get me and Jay to go to a fucking studio and record a record a, a little a little CD. Maybe send it to the Patreon. It's like an actual like CD. Um, That'd be fun. Pay to have it actually professionally recorded. Do do a little bit of a uh, Cookie Woman on there. And we can't do it songs. on YouTube. We'll do it on TikTok. Fuck it. Yeah. No, as long yeah. as we don't so, live in Montana, we can do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, some of them, I, I will put the songs on Spotify. We do have a Spotify podcast as well, by the way. But uh, yeah. Yeah, man. For sure. Definitely stuff going in there. And I love you and the way you taste. Brand Ferguson, as a kid, that bastard from Tales from the Crypt scared the fuck out of me. The Crypt Keeper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it did hit you out of nowhere you're like I, yeah. I don't know what this show is oh it's creepy music is it is it gonna be the adams family you don't know and then it goes down and then well you know nowadays we call that your mother-in-law that pops up <laughs> like, that looks i love weird. my mother-in-law i fucking love her. well okay i've never it's met a good woman. i've never well i i will be meeting but i my ex-mother-in-law he meets his ex-mother-in-law no, she was all right. I can't she say was that. She was, she was nice. I can't say that. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, the joke died on my lips. I shouldn't have said it out loud. You know how you say you, you think things in your thoughts and you say things out loud afterwards, it and you're just, like, "That would have been really funny if I actually meant it." It just sounded mean good. It. Yeah, it just Most sounded people good. Do hate their in-laws. Yeah, I wish. Yeah, it's like I wish I could be Dave Chappelle on Netflix, and I can't. I just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I got I got what you're doing there. That, you know, no, that did me as a kid too, though. Like that, I love that guy, but also hearing that, <laughs> like yeah. that would give you like a weird feeling in your stomach. So I totally get where you're coming. Maybe from it's the that. maybe it's the weird lunch lady at high school when you're like, I don't want no green beans, and she's like, <laughs> you get it anyway. <laughs> like, I heard you like I'm extra slappy. Mm-hmm. Oh shit. Okay, before PP time, we gotta crack the top five. We've got it. We already we already cracked it. Mm-mm. Well, we sort of cracked it, but I'm gonna give you mine. Um, and I, I'm not, I don't want to go into a lot of detail, guys, because I don't want to relive things that made this film hurt my nutsack of ter- with terror. The grudge, okay. And I know you guys are thinking, like, it. what the fucking pussy bitch ass, goddamn, I bet he likes goddamn cotton flavored cotton candy vanilla ice cream on a cone that looks like a cock that he sucks on in front of his mommy. Stop it. I'm getting hard. It scared me. Okay. I did not see the grudge in theaters at all. I saw the grudge. Um, I actually went out of my way and bought the grudge on DVD from Walmart at midnight, you know, when they were still open 24 hours a day. And I was on a Tuesday evening. It was on a Tuesday. I went and bought it and I going put up. the, Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I put th- I put that shit in, and I was like, it's, "It ain't gonna be nothing." I put the subtitles in. I was ready. I was like, "It's gonna be fine." And we weren't even doing channels uh, like a channel at all. I was just like watching it because I I saw the trailers. Like these kind of movies intrigue me enough that I'll, I'll like, I actually want to watch it. But I know they might scare me. The Grudge. Uh, I was like, "Yeah, it'll be fine." Sir Michelle Geller is hot. I'll focus on that. It'll be fine. Um, and no, it 
that that's not what happened. That's not what happened at all. What happened was this goddamn samurai force of evil came out of a dark stairwell with her face going <laughs> like when the door closed like that the first when i saw um i can't remember the her name the grudge girl's name kayoko i think sadako Ka sadako. yeah well sadako was uh the ring. i think it's kayoko his kills well as champs yeah <laughs> dude there was something about this movie the herky jerkiness of the character of the grudge the little asshole boy that should have been fucking aborted uh, didn't like that. Uh, I don't give a fuck. I'll say what I gotta say on this channel. I don't care. I will. Say, I was like, Ugh. yeah. I would have. I would be like, yeah. I would be like, it's not gonna make it. You know, it's not gonna make it to uh, fruition in the vagina. Um, that's what I sound like when I come. By the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I. You know, I'm not even getting into the abortion thing. But my point being is, like, I <laughs> think it was a very, yeah, it was a very, very scary ass movie. <laughs> Uh, I didn't like the death rattle sound. I thought I hated that shit. Um, it was acted very well. Um, but the herky jerky, the contortion thing, I it scared the fuck out of me. It scared the fuck out of me. And I, it's funny, dude. It's one of those movies that, uh, and it, actually Cody, uh, speaking of which six, 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 the devil mentioned earlier, he actually is the same way as I am is the fact that if you see it on T, if you're like scrolling through, the channels on TV and you see it playing in our mindset, we have to watch it. We have to watch it till the end. If we see it, if we don't watch it, she'll come and get us. <laughs> like if we don't watch the rest of the movie and I swear to God, when I watched that fucking movie, I wanted to bury the goddamn thing in the ground and then use some like sacrament, burn some bushes and tea leaves and like put some <laughs> holy water on that shit. That is one of those. I knew that would be on your list. Like I knew it fucking would. And like I, I can't even make it through that movie without falling asleep. So, and that's what it's worth it to say about these lists is they are so, like everything's subjective. Comedy subjective, but scare fear is totally subjective. Yeah. Like there is stuff that will scare you that the next guy will just watch while eating cotton candy and having sex with his grandpa. You know? Yeah. Total Kentucky yeah. thing. It's just, it's just speaking of personal experience, I guess. I what my point is, yeah, it's it's totally subjective. It's great. That's what's crazy about these lists. Um, my number four is gonna be that, speaking of blink that reminds me of that blink song. When you fucked grandpa, did he tell you that he loved you? Um number At least four he could have done. <laughs> did he rub his dick in <laughs> no, that's what it says, it says. He rubs his dick in broken glass. Are you my you're my favorite grandson as my dick is in your ass? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit my number, we're gonna get uh, demonetized so bad dude oh it's it's horrible uh i'm just gonna get canceled completely the evil dead the evil dead the oh evil dude dead. like it almost made it dead. it almost made it for me it almost did you know i just it's one of those fucking movies and and again jay and i did a patreon commentary for evil dead 2 and i got so confused and i was like evil dead 2 is scarier than evil dead and i went back and watched evil dead and i was like i was fucking wrong <laughs> i was so wrong man oh. uh that dude it is such a natural unorthodox just it wrong really is fucking weird feeling when you watch this movie and those demons fucking start to float the fuck up and they're like that fuck on. <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> No, it's scary it's, as fuck, dude. It's scary. Yeah, there, it's it's it, there's there's a deep part of your body that's just like that's not natural. You know, like it's it's, a, it's, a, it's a I nightmare. reject you and all of your claims. <laughs> it's a nightmare yes. that you didn't even know you fucking had came to life. The Evil Dead is so fucking underratedly scary, and it's so goddamn like punk rock and like like as the movie goes forward and he's getting sprayed in the face with blood and like gnarly shits happening to him, it gets worse and worse and worse. That's a movie that has it all it scares you it doesn't give yeah. a fuck it's gory it has it's just a fucking it's like fucking drinking it's tropical punch for the first time only it's scary yeah it's like I sam raimi kind of remembered the nightmare that he was having and put it on in a script yeah like it was like, his nightmare right, and, and it's so it like us. dude like that's what i'm saying yeah. like you get it because i watched this uh for the first time with uh you know one of my exes a long time and she was laughing i, I wanted to punch her in the face with a fucking chainsaw Cause I, and she was like, ha, 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 "How do you find this fucking <laughs> horrific? You, you are such a pussy." I was like, "Well, you are such a whore." She later became my wife. But anyway, that was the I ex I was that. talking about. Yeah, I was, in the, I was in the wedding. Yeah, I know you were. 
basically in the cabinet. You got you got you got a little it. you got a little juice of the skink on your on your I skin. I should stop. It burns. It. I'm sorry, but bro. no. Um, yeah, I, 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 like I've shown this movie um to other people before, and they, they don't get it because it, it obviously it's low budget. Like it's not scary, I guess, if you're not really. But you, you get invested in this movie. I remember watching this movie um, when I was like 13 or 12. And I watched this movie. And, and, and right after this movie, I watched uh, Night of the Living Dead, the Tom Savini, whatever. You know, I, yeah, it, it was that it was it because uh, my uncle had rented both these movies. This movie was fucking terrifying. It was scary as shit. You got to remember, Mike and I grew up in the in the 90s. There, there was no like fakery vf you know B, bfx you know amazing cgi really at all like this shit was fucking filmed on a homemade ass canon camera with some pr uh, practical effects this shit was and the music and and the way the camera was shooting dude this was a horror ride from fucking hell like the, yeah. the entire movie was you know what it was man it was too legit too legit to quit. Hey, hey. Too legit. I, I, I thought there was going to be like drums and like a whole sound <sighs> behind me when I did that. And it didn't happen. I Sweat like running all over my chest. I don't quit. No, I just press harder than I ever did before. And that's all I know. I'm a whore. Uh, what's your number three? You fucking slut. And then you can go pee pee because I know you need to. All right. So my number three. Yeah, I got. I actually show me your dick. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, the Ring is going to be... The Cock Ring ah! is my number three. The Cock Ring. But The Ring itself is is my number three. Um, and again, I never saw The Ring, the actual original version, Ringu, which I know it's superior than the American version by far. I don't want to watch your devil shit. Keep it in your Asian country. I don't want to bring that over here and infect myself with that shit. So I will say to you, The Ring... Uh, as it is, uh, is a scary ass fucking film. Even the Americanized version, I feel like they did a pretty good job. Uh, and I, I like, here's the thing I didn't watch Ringu, I read about it, so I know. I saw, I know, of those either. I know, that, I know that the elevation of horror is a lot higher with Ringu. I don't want to watch Ringu, but the ring itself. <laughs> I watched it. The, the, I don't want to watch Ringu. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I, I feel That's like your dad when you're like, Dad, yeah, please I, watch Ringu. And he's like, I don't want to watch. Yeah, you know, I actually was talking to my real dad not long ago, and he was like, and that came down from the Supreme Court, U.S. <laughs> <laughs> he said it came down from the Supreme Court, U.S. I was like, I don't think there's that many Supreme Courts. I mean, I could be wrong, but he was like, he had to make sure he clarified U.S. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna get out of that. But uh, yeah, the ring scared me, dude, for multiple reasons. I did not see it coming at all. I, I remember t I, I was on a date. We picked the ring because obviously that's the movie that it's the go-to. If you're a guy, you're trying to get the girl. You're you're gonna go pick a horror movie. You know, whatever. What what's the newest horror movie this week? We'll go see that shit because yeah. you're gonna try to do the little reach around. You're gonna try to do a little kissy kiss yeah. after the popcorn, whatever. Oh. No fucking popcorn sharing, kissy faces, nothing happened in this movie because Just the Jay opening. Weeping. Yeah, it was me. No, dude, it was me doing this. <laughs> I looked. I, I stared at the floor longer than a janitor that was sweeping it up <laughs> because I did not look at that fucking screen in the first ten minutes of that movie or fifteen when that whole opening, like you know, up the stairs and the, the closet doors open. It's like, all that shit i was done it like it like the camera angles the way the story was shot everything scared the fuck out of me that movie i like and again i went to the theater not knowing shit about this movie i hadn't seen a trailer i hadn't watched anything and i just took her because i was like it's a horror movie and it's gonna be haha -ha. i thought it was gonna be like a you know whatever like a stupid yeah like a woo, i'm gonna do that like arm thing and that ugh. and that didn't happen it was more like oh i gotta pee but uh, the 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 when 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 the guy is looking and everybody that sees the tape is looking in the in the mirror or the camera and their faces are like oh, like you know and they can't fix it and they're like oh shit. it's like like a TikTok filter that won't go away and then that bitch is like seven days you know it's like a fucking <laughs> debt collector that just won't go away like this bitch is yeah. serious she bought your debt dude everything yeah. about this movie the music. 
the kid, the little, I hated that creepy ass kid too. I, I, I thought he was more creepy than the kid in the grudge. Yeah, he had was like, he if had you watch voices. the tape, she'll come for you. You let her out, huh? <laughs> I, I hate, oh God. I, I'd have just given that kid to her to make her stop. Up, man. Yeah. But yeah. It's the ring. Totally, the ring. You know, I love it. You know, I love it too. I do. Thanks. Oh, All right, so I'm gonna go. Dense. I'm gonna go. Oh, I'm gonna go so pee dense. now and tell it in the tell right, it. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy. Thank it. you. We're all gonna think about it while you're gone. We're gonna think about it. once again. Baby. I want everybody to take into their hearts right now that you are living in the same world as Jay, who in about 32 seconds is gonna be holding his golden cock in his hands and releasing the energy of his day into a porcelain circle. It's a beautiful thought. It's a beautiful thought for all of us. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes again. <laughs> it's what is this show? It's so stupid. Why do we do this? Uh, my number three, while Jay is taking a pee pee, is gonna be Texas Chainsaw Masturbation. Master, no, no massacre, massacre, Texas Chainsaw. Asaker. That's what happens when you take one too big. Uh, a gasker. That's, that's what happens when you have Taco Bell. Uh, a masker. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. 1974. The original, to me, is the third scariest film of all time. And here's why. It's because you watch this fucking movie and you are a part of it. You see it. It's sweaty. You feel like you're in a van with a bunch of dudes. It's like being on tour uh, with a with a very unpopular band. And you're in a, your shitty small van and everybody smells weird and you're eating mustard sandwiches and it's hot outside and it's just pure ass smell. And when you find out how they made Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it really was like pure ass smell. It was like they had fucking they're in this hut or whatever with no air conditioning erect. The wreck part's not true. They're in this hut with no air conditioning, and outside they're burning the fucking carcasses of animals. So they're in there doing this 24 hour fucking take of this movie, and you can smell the burning carcasses of dead animals. And meanwhile, that doesn't even start in the content that was in this film with people just hitting people in the face with fucking broomsticks while their heads are covered up with potato sacks. And then all that's not even touching on Leatherface. The fucking dude just comes out of the goddamn meat locker. Like like an old dude who's like senile but still goes to the gym for some reason. And you just go in there and like you're at the gym getting your fucking axe body spray. The dude just comes out with his dick out. Just fucking just opens the stall door. Fucking it's my dick. Hey, it's my dick, everybody. Uh, which happens to me three to four times a week. But I should really switch gyms. But no, well, the way Leatherface comes out for the first time with that fucking hammer. And the, the nasty sound when he hits that dude in the head. And it's like... And then the dude goes down and he starts fucking flopping on the table. Like, you know, you, when you have sex for the first time, only it's reversed. It's like, you're getting fucked by life instead of you fucking somebody on prom night. It's horrifying. It's awful. And it smells and you can smell it. It's the first film ever that has smell vision Cause when you're watching that shit and it's in the Texas sun, you know, those people were going through it and it's horrifying and it's horrible and it feels realistic and it feels like you're there there's no film like all these movies can try to be hardcore, but it's like Jack Black said in oh, fuck. I've had too much to drink. It's like Jack Black said in <laughs> School of Rock. It's like, you know, no, you're not hardcore. No, you're not hardcore. Unless you live hardcore. Unless you live hardcore. That movie was fucking hardcore. People can try to recreate the griminess, the fucking weird, like grainy feel to it. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre was fucking legit. It was the it was it. I mean, that was the. Fuck, when you go see one of those Grindhouse movies and you want to be fucked up, that movie was what they're based on. There's no movie like it, in my opinion. It's so fucked up and dark and twisted. And when people die, it feels like they really die. And sometimes you want them to die like Franklin in his fucking wheelchair. Like, I'm sorry you're in a wheelchair, but goddamn, shut the fuck up for five seconds, will you? I'm so glad you're dead. But anyways, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is really scary to me. And to this day, every time I watch it, I feel fucking skankier. It just makes me feel really skanky deep down inside. Brad Ferguson said, as a kid, that bat. Oh, wait, I fucking read that already. Sorry. My apologies. Ryan Estrada said, the youth will never experience watching the late night horror movies on TNT before DVRs and on demand. The scary movies hit differently. They did. And that's the thing about movies back then. Even, even the ones that weren't scary, you didn't know. So, like, you go into a movie, your parents are asleep, probably fucking it's disgusting. And then you're watching TV alone 
no one's taking care of you or paying attention to your well-being and you're just like up in the middle of the night like this is crazy <clears throat> and, you're fuck, and you're watching movies once you have a movie fuck you up in the middle of the night while your parents are fucking and you know that it's a possibility it changes mm -hmm. everything everything you watch is an unknown territory it's like doing butt sex for the first time anything could happen and that's what it was like to be us with no internet you couldn't pick up your fucking phone turn off minecraft for a second and fucking google hey what's this fucking uh shoebox diaries movie no it had the opportunity to really fuck your night up and you i ain't gotta pay it. for holy shit yeah. red shoelace yeah. cockery it's like watching Crazy. real sex that shit will fuck you up too you're like i didn't even sex. know that yeah but real sex I feel like oh my god sex. my dick's uncircumcised what but I feel like real sex was informative. <laughs> like it shows you a yeah, lot of different techniques and like places that you never thought existed that you could go as a young man we learned. and experience a sexual fantasy that you only like you only read about, you know, we learned a lot. And I, I, I watched this. Uh, I don't know if he was an Indian guy or an African guy. He literally took a, a, a stick and, and, and he wrapped his snake around it and he stretched it out and his dick was I seen it like it was yeah. like a like a stretch Armstrong wiener like it, like he <laughs> but but he like stretched his dick out and it was like what the fuck yeah this is weird a hundred percent dude a hundred percent all right hey I'm gonna fucking I gotta I'm gonna go pp now uh but mm -hmm. I was at uh where mm -hmm. was I at fucking we're close to catching up we're close to being caught up we're close to ending this list we almost have it all together we're at 921 i just read ryan estrada good man thank you ryan appreciate you appreciate all you guys for watching and super chatting and doing everything Show. that you do because you're Show. sexy motherfuckers you said uh, 921 trey, trey filmed at it 931 is where we're at 931 okay give me I'm one totally second good. give me one second and i'm gonna get down there to y'all give me one second um, let's see paul allen's card uh it's it's trey yeah Trey, 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 those seconds. All right, I'm there. Be right back. Okay, I'll see you soon. I'll see you real soon. Uh, Trey, I'm not gonna even try to enunciate your name. It, it, it's like I'm not. Trey says not the scariest movie I've ever seen, but Christian Bale's performance in American Psycho was crazy to watch the first time. Let's see Paul Allen's card. Yes, it was. Actually, that was a... I, I could get people being disturbed by that movie. Like, it actually was a good representation of, like, uh, like this deep-seated, murderous side to people that look like they have everything together, you know? Uh, like, just, like, pillars of the community, in a way, uh, in, 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 the, in the stockbroker world, that is that you would never think that would have these terrible vices or these terrible ideas. Um, and then you're like, what the, I'm never moving to New York city. I'm not involved in that at all. It kind of makes you feel that way. I, I get you a hundred percent and Christian Bell's performance in American cycle, I think personally was his best performance period. I think that uh, he's done. Obviously Christian Bell is an amazing actor uh, all praise be upon him, but I do not think there's been a movie that I've ever seen with Christian Bell that solidified him as a an actor of status, rather other than uh, American Psycho. So I I agree with you. It was very disturbing. I I think that's what I think that's what uh, you and I agree with. Uh, why you gotta have a weird <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that is, dude. I can't say your goddamn name. Uh, Majuks Depose 03 uh, says, Kane! Are you referring, are you doing a Star Trek reference from the Wrath of Khan? It's, I know it's not, but Kane, um, I mean, but I, I like the energy. I like the energy. Thank you so much, my good sir. Thank you so much. And I think that that would be where, oh, no, what the fuck? Can we calm down here? Phil Brown, thank you so much, sir, says, Exorcist 3 may be jump off the couch. Another George C. Scott film, and he's great. But why isn't Brad Dorif given more renown? He's great in everything, and notably in this. I don't know. 
That's actually well. I think what happened with Brad Dorf. Brad Dorf is an incredible actor. A hundred percent, I agree with you. And I feel like what happened with him was that he got, you know, you know, probably in his eyes, the role of a lifetime with Chucky. Uh, he didn't think it was going to be the role of a lifetime, but it became, I guess, um, the role that, in a lot of people's eyes, defined him. And and that's kind of. But Brad Dorf is just a great actor. I mean, he was great. Uh, he's been great in everything. I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure Lord of the Rings. I, I could be wrong, but wasn't he um, Worm Tongue in, in in the Lord of the Rings? Uh, he's a he's an incredible actor, uh, one thousand percent. And Exorcist Three, in of itself, is a great movie. And it, it, like, and I feel it's so unfair for that film because it came right after the shitty goddamn wipe your ass hole exorcist two, which was basically a recap of exorcist one had nothing new to offer. It was literally just like, I missed last week's episode. Can you tell me what's going on? That's what the entire movie of exorcist two was. And then in, in the third film, they actually try to move on from Linda Blair's, uh, portrayal and and do their own thing and brad dwarf was incredible in that um but yeah i i agree with you i agree uh he should be like people should be lining up to kiss that man's toenail brad dwarf is it's a national treasure he's such a great great actor i agree with you one thousand percent um child of the corn Comes in and says, yo, what's good, fellas? Which of these arguments would you side with more? Scream better overall than 78 or Hellraiser better overall than a Nightmare on Elm Street 084 OG? Um, I don't like the I don't like the line of questioning that you're doing. I feel like I need a lawyer even reading your question. I feel like it's illegal with what you just asked me. And I, I, I don't feel comfortable doing this at all with you, child of the corn. I feel like you need to go back to the corn and, and you need to, you need to clear that corn field and not ask these questions. What the fuck are you doing? Child of the corn, child of the corn. Welcome back. Hey, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. He says, which of these arguments would you side with more scream better overall than the 78 halloween is what i'm assuming or hellraiser better than the overall a nightmare on elm street 84 og i will not partake in these questions i will not do this i'll say definitely scream of course I'll you will scream. you piece of shit <laughs> i'm a dirty dirty whore what a surprising Whether... answer i'm so shocked <laughs> Uh, what time stamp are you at, by the way? Oh, I, got uh, I, got I, I, I literally just now scrolled down to Joey uh, Hebert at hey. uh, 949. Okay. Fucking sweet tits. What is your number? Those. We're almost there. So my go. number two is going to be the changeling. Uh, it was already mentioned oh. earlier uh, by a very informed and wonderful um person that super chatted and I, I i'm sorry i can't remember your name <laughs> the beer is just literally soaking my brain and dumb <laughs> but like uh the changeling know. with george c scott this movie scared the fuck out of me i remember um i didn't expect much of this film at all but uh when i watched it i think the i think the uh the the approach in the movie that george c scott took he was a uh a music director that lost his wife and kid in a very tragic accident. And he moves into this house and, and, and he's not a paranormal guy. He doesn't give a shit. He's just a regular dude, regular Joe trying to start his life over. And this paranormal thing starts happening to him. And, and dude, it, it felt so fucking real. Like it, when they do the recordings and you hear the, the kid when he turns it up, dude, this scared me. Do I get goosebumps even talking about it? This scared the fuck out of me. When they had brought over um, a psychic and the psychic had tried to communicate with Joseph, who was the little boy that haunted this house. And you hear, it's like, 
what is your name? And, <laughs> and you hear like, Joseph. God damn. And when he turned it up and, and my hair is starting to stand on it. And I'm, I'm, my, my arm hair is starting to look like Don King. It was like, Joseph. It's like, my medal in my room. Drown. Dude, it fucking. <laughs> dude. And then there's one scene. Yeah, watch this. Dude, it's dude. You gotta watch this movie. There's I'm one because it. it's so laid back. You don't expect it. You don't expect it. And George C. Scott comes in with such like a regular guy energy. Like again, he's a he. He was like a band guy. He's not into paranormal shit at all. He just noticed all this crazy shit happening. And then his friend who had helped him purchase the house it was like, "Hey, have you thought about a um, a psychic?" And he's like, "Yeah, I, I look like it. We'll try it out. What's going to happen?" And then the, this shit goes down. Let's go Let's go and dude, and, he, and and then after the psychic and all this crazy shit happened, he starts turning up. Oh my god, dude! There's that that scene after the seance is one of the scariest shit. I've, and then there's another scene where uh, one of the the little uh, balls that little play balls that the kid used to bounce, like one of those bouncy balls. He gets so mad, uh, George C. Scott's character. Like he gets so. He's like, I'm fucking done with this shit. I don't believe in this paranormal stuff. I don't want to believe in this. I just want to write some fucking music and challenge Billy Joel. <laughs> and 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 then he, and he takes the fucking ball and he goes to the uh, the the river or the ocean. And he chucks that bitch in. And he's like, enough. <laughs> and then as soon as he opens the door, the ball wet. It's wet and dripping with fucking the water bounces down the fucking stairs. God damn, dude, I'm getting fucking chills. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and the story is awesome too because there's a thriller element to it. Because you're like, the kid is trying to say, "I was murdered, I was murdered for my inheritance," and 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 the boy that they replaced with, that's why they call it the changeling. The boy they they replaced because he is was this uh, a spoiler. Yeah, Should maybe it is. I shouldn't. I shouldn't say it. I shouldn't say it. But the, the, but there's a, there's a deep thing going on here. And dude, goddamn man, it, like it's scary, but it's a great story. And George C. Scott handles it. He handles that shit, goddamn. and it's fucking awesome, dude. Because even Texas. like I, I was terrified, dude. I watched this movie. Um, I was, I was, I was, I was a young. I, I was probably four. No, nah, I was like sixteen. Dude, this this thing stuck with me because I feel like because you're you're a skeptic of 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 ghosts and shit. Yeah, ghosts aren't real. You guys, you know, that's what lying. that's like when the girl says that's like uh, uh, the G spot in a, a girl's vagina is not real, but it is. There is a G spot in the girl's vagina. But I, I, I will say, I, well, here's the thing. I, I will say he comes in as a skeptic and he leaves a believer. And, and I loved it because the fact that he is a, a very matter of fact, no nonsense man. A hundred percent. And 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 the movie does a very good job of represent representing that and and do the evidence like if this was ghost hunters in the 19 like like late 70s you'd be like ghosts are fucking real <laughs> like, if that was a like it was so like there's no like here's the thing there's no like real uh there are a couple they're not really jump scares they're just more like holy shit like the wheelchair scene at the top of the stairs fuck dude like it's not really jump scares, uh, but it's just the the idea uh, more so than um, jump scares or anything like that. It, 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 dude, it's it's a great psychological thriller. I'm excited with, to watch uh, with it. a we supernatural should actually, element. We should make it a, a fucking commentary on Patreon, like a first time watch thing. Do you think that would be entertaining, or is it? A movie I, no, I yeah, dude, no because good. like the soundtrack is also incredible. Like there's scenes when he would like discover things. You hear this, you hear this like sound. You're like ah, <laughs> like, <laughs> like you don't want to hear anymore. Like dude, it, it, like it, it just makes you. <sighs> this movie puts you on edge, dude. It makes you so uncomfortable. It makes you so uncomfortable. And and, and it does as a if, well since you're a skeptic, I'm not. I would I'm not. But you're since you're a skeptic, you might feel the same fucking way. <laughs> I'm excited to watch it. I, I am. I, it's been a while since I've had a movie that could maybe fuck me up. So I'm very excited to check that out. What did I do to my screen? My screen got all fucked up. Um, excellent choice, even though I can't confirm nor deny. I believe you. My number two is going to be, oh God, this is like a fucking, where's my, why is my screen all fucked up? What's going on here? Um, it's going to be funny games. 
Now you might say, mm-hmm. Mike, is it the original or the fucking remake? And to you, I say, it doesn't fucking matter, man, because they're the same goddamn movie. They're both fucked Remind up. Remind them. Remind them what it's about. It's disgusting. It's about these fucking kids who come over to this house, and they're like, can I borrow some eggs? And then they, the social awkwardness of it. Yeah. Like they come over. They're, they're, they're like this rich, like, yacht club type fucking rich uh, no, people. Remember, and they yeah. Come over all dressed up nice. And they're like, can I borrow some eggs? And they're like, oh, let me have. It's like, it's like the, uh, if you give a mouse a cookie book. But as the most fucked up story of all time, they keep asking for more shit. It gets more fucked up and they start hinting more. Mm-hmm. And like eventually they just get so fucking mean, man. And what happens with this movie is these these kids take over this like uh, this this rich family's life and they 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 hold them hostage and they do a bunch of fucked up shit to them. It's the and they enjoy song. it. They enjoy it. Too. they love it dude and they fuck with and it's so mean like it's so mean like it actually makes you mad how mean it gets one particular scene which i won't say that you're like they won't do and they fucking do and you're like god game of thrones assholes like what the fuck just mm-hmm. happened and it's it sucks it makes you feel sick like you hate watching it it's so fucking mean and, and awful and disgust and depraved but if a movie if a horror movie wants to scare you like most of them like i want to scare you but i just want to just just a finger, just the tip. Ouch, ouch, you're on my yeah. hair. This movie's like, I want to fist your butt with, with a spike glove on. And then uh, I'll lick it's, the poop off. <laughs> it goes all the way. All yeah, dude. I, I think the remake was fucking disturbing. Like the kid with there, the long hair. and, and I find like, him, Because he seemed like he was a normal... Uh, even when he was... Like what's fucked up is like when they're... When he's talking to him, like, like it would just be a kid that is like taking lessons for tennis. Mm. And like he's saying, like all this fucking depraved shit. They're being so polite about it. Why? Yeah. Fucking your life up. It's disgusting, it, dude. It's it actually just makes me. It's so hard to watch. It is so hard to watch. Um, mm-hmm. I fucking hate that movie. But as, as far as scary goes, yeah, it's it's it 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 did. Stuff you know, I didn't put it on my list, but it, like it reminds me. Uh, it's a little bit more of a cultured human centipede. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. It's like that meanness. It's like a little that. bit more cultured. But yeah, it's the same kind of idea. Like I can fuck with people's lives and you can't do anything about it. Yeah, 100 percent man. It'll fuck you guys up. I'm telling you. Fuck you up. Fuck your life up. Don't watch it. It'll hurt. Uh we're at the fucking number one. We've reached the precipice of the Well, I'm I'm gonna say it because I mean I, I think we're both gonna have the same thing. It's gonna be the exorcist. Oh, we are. Yeah, yeah, the exorcist. Yeah, we don't need to talk about it. God damn, guys. If you've never seen The Exorcist, the original, and by the way, I've heard of the flack. I've seen the flack in the comments. Like, God damn, can people get over the fact that The Exorcist wasn't scary? I mean, what satanic cult did you crawl out of in the middle of Colorado Desert that you don't think it's scary? It is the most disturbing-ass fucking movie um, I've ever seen. Uh it really, because there are so many layers to this film that fucks you up. Uh, you 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 go in thinking it's going to be a, a typical evil horror movie, whatever. There's going to be the demons and devils, and oh my god, who's got the candy? The fight with cream. liquor, um, and then it turns into something totally different. And you know, despite whether or not you believe this actually happened, apparently it did. I don't know. Um, the acting in this movie. The, the choreography of this movie, the, the the way they shot this movie, the, the music of this movie, the color that they used in this movie in certain scenes, like it puts you in a nightmare. Uh, like it, it, it does, it's, it does, it, like it's the first fucking VR for me. Like you literally feel like a goddamn observer of the priests. You know, like, you know, you watch the movie, of course you're not in the movie, but it does, it feels like you're on their shoulders when they're walking in and you see this, crazed ass junky ass bitch with her face all cut up and she's like she didn't smoke crack she smoked the devil's dick from that ouija board and now she's all fucks up and then jake i didn't know you like to get wet yeah (laughs) yeah uh but no you get this like there there's a feeling about that movie and like and like dude there there's so many disturbing moments in this movie like but i mean i feel like everybody's gonna talk about it and think about it the first thing the cross in the vagina, and and, and she's like, I don't even want to. I'm not even going to repeat that shit. That shit, Fuck me, fuck. Jesus. Like, yeah, well, you, you, you have good luck. You're going to do twenty to thirty year, million years in hell. Good luck with your life. I'm not doing that. Uh, that shit was fucking uh, gross. And and not to mention the fact, I 
because I believe in God and shit. I don't. I, when I saw that, I was like, God. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to hell watching this. You boys uh, like it felt, it, it's weird. It felt real. Like they did such a great job with the with the uh, the direction of the movie and and the way they they filmed it. And obviously, the actors were phenomenal. Uh, you really did get pulled into this world, and this movie still stands up in 2023 and it was filmed all those many years ago and it still looks fucking awesome and it still sounds great and the, and it the music is on point and everything is just there i mean dude it's a classic movie there's no way i feel like if you're uh, uh like uh if you have any ounce of humanity in you that you wouldn't be scared shitless by this movie if you'd never heard of this movie in your life and they're like hey i'm gonna put you in a dark fucking room you're gonna watch this movie nobody's gonna be around you watch this fucking movie that you wouldn't come out with like crust stains on your underwear there's no way uh we actually did this with your little brother one time andrew is like hey man you want to watch the exorcist he's like no i'm ready i'm like you're all right we're gonna watch it yeah. and then we watched it with him <laughs> it i know we were up. mean i know we were mean though i know because <laughs> we didn't tell him uh, uh, dude, I, I i agree man like there's just there is no movie that does to me what the exorcist does to me it doesn't um it just it's it's and i i get it like it's just there's that's why this list is so subjective is because like one person can watch something and it cannot fuck with them at all and another person can watch them and it's so so i understand people say they don't think it's scary but like i i actually don't like from my eyes because this yeah. movie every single time i watched it and i actually went and watched it in a theater once and it fucked my shit up. Having seen it, like it was like the fourth time I've seen it. But with that white face, with like oh, pops up, Be like careful. fucking yeah, yeah, out of goddamn nowhere. You know what I mean? Um, it's like it's like when Trump got elected. <laughs> shit I've ever seen in my life. No, but like when he fucking pops up like that, and, and and it's not just it's the lead up to it, it's the vibe to it, it's the the unholiness to it, the fact that it's, it technically is based on a true story, the, the, based on a novel, based on a true story, but like. Yeah. It could have how happened. gnarly it is it it it's it's the one movie of all horror movies that actually to me delivers what everybody wants when they watch any horror movie ever and mm -hmm. that it's 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 mean it's more depraved than you can imagine it would be it's shocking and it's shocking mentally it's shocking viscerally when she runs down the stairs backwards like <laughs> like yeah it's like you take your ass back upstairs <laughs> <laughs> like like your ex-wife when someone op opens a new box of franzia <laughs> yeah it's like uh there's wine i'm on my way <laughs> when she pees on the floor the fucking the room flying around it is i just i think honest to god and and the truth is this list goes for me like the exorcist and then everything else starts yeah dude 100 uh, when i was making my list um I, I knew what my number 10 was going to be, but I was like, I'm already ready for my number one. And then I worked my way down from my 10. But I knew what my number one was going to be right away. I wrote it in first. Uh, yeah, like there's no way. Like it's like like it, when you watch uh, college basketball and you're doing your brackets, like who's the number one overall seed that's going to win it all? Okay, well, it's that. <laughs> it's, it's that. I, like yeah. I already knew. Like it's going gonna, it's gonna to get to the championship. I don't need to argue or talk about it. I knew yeah. the exorcist was going to be there. Dude, like, and like, I like, and to, and to be fair, I it took me a while to watch the movie, and I'd heard all the same stories you guys have probably heard. Oh, it's so terrifying! It's so disturbing. You know, um, I remember an uncle was telling me about it, and like, oh, I, I, he was like eighteen or twenty five or whatever, and he watched the movie, and, and he was like, I went into my mom's room and I, I slept at the edge of her bed because I was so fucking scared. So he went to a Went to his mommy because he was so fucking scared of the movie, uh, and it does it fucks you up, man. Like there, there there's something about it. Like I, I feel like it's either the way it's shot, the way the story is told, uh, the, and, and whether or not it, it's possible that it could be true. I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know anything. I, you know, I don't know. It's just the yeah. fact that that shit was so. You know what? The uh, the only movie for me that came close to challenging The Exorcist, and not really, not not as far as overtaking it, because The Exorcist, by the way, just looking at it from a non-horror uh, point of view, it's one of the most beautifully shot movies ever. It, it, it looks so fucking good, and it yeah. holds up even today. But The Exorcist of Emily Rose... It's an amazing movie. Like, yeah, and it almost made my list... Uh, it, it's the same kind of feeling. Like, that demon shit, I don't fuck with that. I don't like that. 
Like that, that, like, you know, I don't like that because I mean, and the fact is, is she was just playing like Captain Howdy. She was playing with a fucking Ouija board, and then all yeah. of a sudden, she got like possessed by this, or maybe Satan. I don't fucking know. I and, and do they? Honest, by, by the way, back in the seventies when this movie came out, they do you can like they did not hold back. Like the fact that she was literally taking a vagina and stabbing her for. Or, uh, a kid. A she was taking her vagina. She was taking a cross and stab. I said she was taking a vagina and stabbing. <laughs> she took another vagina and stabbed her vagina. Oh, please stab. That's me called scissoring in today's world. Uh, <laughs> but uh, she was taking a, a cross and stabbing her vagina and saying the words that she did. It fuck, dude. Like yeah. Yeah. gnarly. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. And so we're at this point in the show where a lot of people are just talking about, I see in the chat, a lot of people are talking just like, why didn't this make, what, what about this movie? What about this movie? I think we oh. all expected the extras to be top somewhere up there, but um, I will say this, I'm going to go back to the uh, original fucking, where's my goddamn, I, I've lost my, 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 my wherewithals here. Okay, here we are. So I will say this, like going through um, our, our uh, honorable mentions. Yeah. And again, I just want to I just want to reiterate when it comes to this list, like when you look at this fucking list, like look at this list, you guys look at this. I would like I would have expected there to be different movies in here. Like when I looked at my list, I was like, this seems weak. It is shocking. Yeah. I just want to read it one more time. It is very, so shocking how little, yeah. how little movies actually fucking scare you. Like it is hard to find a movie. Like if you ask, is the fourth con your top 10 scariest of all time? I'm like, no way. But like when you look yeah. at the list, like fuck it is. Like it's crazy how little of horror movies actually fucking get you. But that being said, well, that well, we were being fair though because again, yeah, like that's why this list was hard because I was Everyone's actually different. we were both are trying to figure out movies that like that that stick with you. They may not be the best put together horror movie that you've ever seen, and th there's yeah. obvious problems with them, and you could pick up those apart all day long. But like that movies that just stick with you, like that they, they just they, they have the ability to stick to your brain like herpes. You're like, yeah. fuck, I need to get a treatment for that. When she leaves your house, she's going to be like, you're like, she's going to remember that. Mm -hmm. I did that right. Or she leaves your house and then she calls you on the phone. She's like, guess what? I'm pregnant. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I already can tell. Fuck, dude. Uh, it wasn't even that good of sex. <laughs> uh, honorable mention, though. Honorable mention time. Uh, I'll just, just take turns going all the way through the list real quick. If that makes sense yeah, to you. I, yeah, no. I'm, we're not going to bore you guys with like... Uh, but about everything about the movie but yeah uh first off for me power rangers the movie <laughs> that fucking eye that's a bad one right there fucked me up yeah no, i'm just kidding um uh uh black coat's daughter fucked me up that got mm. me that was it's not a very rewatchable movie which is why i didn't make my list but the first time i saw black coat's daughter actually had me crawling up the yeah. couch freaked out martyrs uh different kind of scares it was more of like a fuck like ah Ah, shit i can't believe this happened but martyrs would have been on there um movies i thought about putting on there included um poltergeist poltergeist it's very popcorn um yeah you know it, it, it's a it's a better horror movie than a lot of the movies on my list but like as far as pure fear goes it had moments in there that actually got to me deeply especially when she falls in that fucking pool and there's the dead fucking things are popping up yeah that's a good one really good Really good horror in uh, Poltergeist for sure. Um, Strange Land. Uh, it's more mm. of an entertaining movie, but like when you think about your daughter getting abducted by fucking D. Snyder and he's like putting piercings and shit into her and like doing body shit to her. Hey, I thought we were talking about Ezra Miller right now. What are you doing? <laughs> hey, the calm down. He's only like a like a piercing away from that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what do you think about? your daughter being in the hands of that character it is fucking frightening as I'm shit. That eight millimeter scary. wasn't on there for you then uh, oh yeah you could count down there for sure there's no doubt about that for sure wreck is one of the uh That's wreck the could have been on my list that fucking in scene man uh the first time you see it it mm -hmm. really does get watered down with more and more viewings and more and more ripoffs that come off but when they're taking that camera up into that thing and like you don't it's, it's really scary uh sinister you had that on your list surprisingly actually scary Fucked up, drank too much before we went to see that originally. Didn't get to experience it, but watched it on home well, video remember, afterwards. I feel like the music up. also helped that. It's like, oh, 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 oh. Remember that weird, <laughs> like, fucking yeah. chanting that was going on when he was watching it? Yeah, I was like, or are, are there Native Americans chanting outside with a fucking bonfire <laughs> going on and that's like they're causing curses? Because well, it sounded like that. 
every time they would throw up one of those fucking new footage reels, you're like, God damn it, here we fucking yeah. go. And it was fucked up every time. Dude, the I lawnmower think the lawnmower thing, one was the yeah. worst one. The lawnmower yeah. one was the fucking worst one. Or the image of the family just fucking hanging there. Remember, really or, or, remember they're in the garage and he sets the fucking car on fire and they're all tied yeah. up? Yeah. God fucked damn. Up. Okay. Deep. Okay. Deep into your hole fucked up. Halloween. Uh, look, I, I included it. Halloween is one of the scariest movies of all time. It's just not to what me. What a pussy! Because, because I saw Michael Myers' face. I saw advertisements. I saw all the Habichi bot about Halloween before I ever watched the movie for the first yeah. time. Older but folk, to, uh, older folk would probably put it as number one. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think it. I think mm. this is why this is our scariest. I think it's one of the scariest movies of all time. But like, if you've never seen anything like that and you saw that white mass pop up and you never saw it before, it would have fucked your life up. So if I saw that in '79 or whatever, or '78, '79, it would have fucking ruined me. So but I good luck. That. But, but good news is you weren't a babysitter and you're not 17. Fuck Thank yeah, you, you die. Oh <laughs> yeah, I got that going for me. Um, uh, uh, it 1990, it not the mm. not the as good as the 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 remake or whatever it was. The 1990, it still fucks with me to this day. It's, really it's just such a drawn out, long ass fucking movie that like it doesn't really fucking hold you. But when it has you in its grasp, it's really fucked up and dark and twisted. And Tim Curry is so part. good. First yeah, part. first part specifically yeah. is the best. Um, and then uh hereditary, which we mentioned, and that is that's it for and the strangers had its I had thought its, do I I swear to god, I thought the strangers was gonna break your top 10 because you talk it, about it, it all the time. It's just like it, well, for me, the, the funny games is like the strangers on fucking meth. So, like once you see funny games, it like pushes strangers deep, deep down. But it did have its moments for sure, as far yeah. as home invasion goes. I must be psycho, it was like dude. the it was the popular version of funny games. Yeah. Right? Well, I must be psycho because I, I never I was like, yeah, yeah, well, that happens all the time. Who cares? <laughs> like, I was just like, that's Don't welcome to America. Like, I, like, I don't know what it is. I uh, even like April was telling me, it's like, oh, when I saw the strangers, like, like I was scared. Like when I left the theater, I'm like, I was just like, that's a good fucking movie. I don't believe it. Cause they're <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. they're just fucking humans. And maybe it's because I've watched too much, uh, code blue or real world uh, real world police or something it's like yeah motherfucker had a gun like that was trained a little bit they kill him in five seconds uh, I, I get it. but uh, <laughs> I, get like, it. I don't well, know those masks were well thought out too no they were great really no I, I still like i mean the movie was great i mean obviously but um my uh honorable i only had um, i'm listening yeah, i'll get a drink real quick okay my eight were um pet cemetery the original pet cemetery i i feel like that movie disturbed me uh, quite a bit. I feel like, um, you know, when Gage gets run over by the semi truck and then the absolutely heartbreaking howl that the father does after his son is run, run over, it's it, like it, it brings a realism to that movie, like right off the bat that I didn't see coming. And then I feel like the the most fucked up part for Pet Cemetery to me. And it always has fucked me up. Well, Zelda was the the the, the chick with Spina Bifia when they when they and I'm talking about the original Pet Cemetery, not the yeah. new remake, the Spina Bifia one where um she was just like oh, blah, blah, blah. and and then the the little the <laughs> little uh, the, the little sister was trying to take care of her, which she never should have had that job because obviously Zelda was insane because of the pain, and the little girl they they had said, oh, you're gonna take care of your sister. She goes up there and she gives her a medicine. She starts choking to death, and then she's just reaching for her. That was fucking terrifying. I think that was awful. There was it was awful for multiple reasons. Like she's eight year old girl or nine year old girl. How do you, and then she, this the, like the way that she sees her sister and I'm yeah you know Spina Biffy is fine. I, I get it, but it looks like a monster to her. Like and and she hated her sister. By the way, Zelda hated her fucking sister. And then the, the 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 third part that really fucked me up was at the end of the movie after he kills Gage. Uh, he takes his wife and buries her in Pet Cemetery, knowing what will happen, and just waits for it. Like he sits in this house, drinks a couple of beers, and then his wife comes in with her fucking eye missing, and then like she like rubs his head, like like giving up. Like I don't know. It was it was like it was like the movie was like. Who fucking whatever it doesn't matter. Like I, I can't be the hero. Like you had a daughter, bitch. You could have fucking your your wife's dead. 
your little bitch ass son that got on drugs from the pet cemetery dirt. You killed that asshole. You got a daughter. Go take care of your daughter. But no, instead you're like, I got, I miss that sweet pussy. I'm gonna go fucking bury my wife and wait for that hoe to come through the door with an eyeball like hanging out her fucking cheek and then stab me in the fucking head and then probably drag me back to pet cemetery. Like you know, I like that was just disturbing to me. It's like giving up. I feel like that was like what was fucked up to me is like you never. I feel like it came out of nowhere. You didn't expect the the main guy to give up. He just gave up. Which I get. Yeah. I mean, he he suffered through tragedy, but you still had a daughter, and he didn't. A little bit of that in the remake too. Yeah, for sure. Um, and my uh, the other one was Conjuring. I, I didn't put it in there. Um, I don't really need to talk much about why. Um, <clears throat> I feel like it was a, like The Exorcist two point. Not it really wasn't two point It was more of a remake of The Exorcist. Uh, there were some moments in that movie that were very scary, but I I just didn't. But it's a great movie, and it could have made my top ten. But there was too many good movies on there that i had to i had to push you to the side uh hellraiser inferno uh now to be honest i almost put this over hellraiser hellraiser inferno actually scared me quite a bit because the, it's the fact that you're being punished for your sins uh in, in in a real way like uh he opens the box he's a corrupt detective in hellraiser inferno and he's done he's cheated on his wife he does drugs he's an asshole he makes up charges he does everything um and he opens this box up after he fucks. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. And he fucks his <laughs> whore and he opens his box up. And then the he's in hell, essentially. At the end of the movie, you find out that he's always been in hell. That's scary to me. I don't know why. Like you can't get out. Get like it. no matter what you do, you're just gonna repeat the mistakes of your life over and over and over again. And to me, that would be hell. You don't need to burn just the fact that you are literally gonna repeat. Every mistake that you fucking made for eternity is scary. Like they catch you in a loop and that's what you do for the rest of your life. And there's yeah. no changing it. That's scary as fuck to me. Um, and, and my my other one was Grave Encounters. Um, that's a good one. Yeah. I, I love Grave Encounters, dude. And <laughs> it's not because me and Mike were in the second one. <laughs> that's no big deal. Whatever. No we big... were in a we were in a movie. Uh, yeah, but we were uh, Grave Encounters scared me because of the claustrophobia of that movie. And the fact that like they couldn't get out, like again, maybe th there's a there's a um, a pattern going on here. Like you can't get out, you can't move. That the house keeps shifting, it keeps moving. And, and I like the fact that they they start out with like this the the, the the generic, very fake ass ghost hunters, ghost adventures type of uh, thing. We're like, yeah, the spirits talk to me, and then it, that shit get real though. That shit get real. Somebody brought and laced the weed with acid. And now we all going on a trip, and they can't Nobody get out of the beer. The beer's Dude, gone uh, bad. Yeah, yeah, you know, it wasn't even there was bad CGI in it. Obviously, like when they go into the room where the tub is, and the girl goes ah, and she like turns around, her face is all fucking morphed. It was bad, but there was I the panic of the movie, the you know the actors of the movie doing this panic. It it worked very well. I loved it. And then when they find one of the cameramen, and he's in a, a, a like a. A hospital gown and he's like been lobotomized i i think i i think grave encounters is a is a brilliant movie dude i i really do i, I think grave encounters is an awesome fucking movie because it takes something like the subject material like uh, of those shows that you see all the time the ghost adventures ghost whatever and and it turns it on its head it's like what if this shit was real do you think these motherfuckers are capable of handling that no nah. they're 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 fucking actors they're they're yeah. like they're Lucchese, <laughs> Lucchese. Um, yeah, uh, my other one's Mothman Prophecies. It's a good one. I, 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 yeah, dude, that that's what scared me. Uh, yeah, it's under your shoe in your cabinet. <laughs> like, again, based on possibly a real story, Mothman Prophecies is a very creepy ass movie. Uh, if you watch that, very well acted, very well shot. It's got some amazing, amazing scenes in that movie. I'm not going to give that much away. But it's, it, I feel like it's a very creepy ass movie. The Babadook. Uh, I oh will give the, the, I, the. Well, we all remember the fucking whiny ass kid that we wanted to strangle. Nah. We didn't have to be the mother to want to do that, but we just wanted to do it. That uh, tender dates kid. I feel like when when the mom gets possessed, that fucking scared me, dude. Like just this idea that she's like running around the house without a fucking uh, leash, and she's like, I mean, and she should have done this like. 55 minutes ago. She sure already killed this kid. Mm -hmm. I would have. 
But no, but you know, but it. very just. But you know what? For me, the Babadook is like that thing. You remember, like you know, sometimes when you wake up and you look at the edge of your bed, and there's a pile of clothes, and it, you're like, it looks like a person sitting there, and it's not. But in this movie, it is. That's scary as fuck to me. Lights out was <laughs> another one. Lights That's out scared one. the fuck out of me. But here's the th- here's the reason why I didn't make my top ten. Lights out reminds me more of a Michael Myers origin story. Like you know, it it was so cool and it had like this edge to it. It felt like uh, Lights Out was more of a origin story for like a Michael Myers type character. I don't know. It just didn't bother yeah. me. I like it scared I, I me. There were scary believe, moments in it. Yeah, I cannot believe we never got a sequel to that shit, dude. It's crazy to me. That yeah, Lights Out two should have already happened. Like I feel like Lights yeah. Out, the girl in Lights Out should have already been like that. We should have four movies. Like she should be like yeah. Like yeah, like a supernatural like, type of power, and shit, like whatever. Yeah, and then my my last one, and uh, this was a big one. I act I actually changed this. Um, House on Haunted Hill scared the fuck out of me. The the remake. I that was a good one. Yeah, uh, the Vatican. <laughs> yeah, I hated that shit, dude. The herky jerky <laughs> shit. I hated the fact, dude. The scariest scene in that movie is when uh, the the chick from Mortal Kombat, Sonya goes downstairs and she's filming because she's trying to get like like a great journalistic view of of the asylum and like those co- fucking ghost cocksuckers who i guarantee you didn't have any insurance and they were like sh- like cutting that dude open while he's alive and he's like ooh, ooh, ooh. and they're like they're literally doing operation on him and they go ooh, ooh. and they look at her while she's filming and then they go ah, blah, 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 blah. Like, like, dude, and then you hear, remember when they find her camera and you hear going, and you hear, yeah. and like, they're like pulling her insides out while she's alive. It's funny and dumb, but it also has really scary moments that, in it. Do you imagine if a couple of goddamn ghost Dr. Kevorkian, Dr. Kevorkians were like literally pulling yeah. your, your, your fucking wiener out, your asshole, your, your stomach. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be what? sexy at first, and then you're like, "Oh shit, <laughs> I'm just a head and a body." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a, that was that that was it. That was my honorable mentions. That, that's all, all it right. was. All right, well, that's the thing. Let's 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 catch up on the super titties, ah. and then we're gonna get the fuck out of here. We gotta go, guys. We have we car payments. We have we have bills to pay for. We have kids to take to school. I'm in running seven... state to state. I got to keep <laughs> running away. <laughs> we have people to bail out of jail. Uh, what What did you end on the, on the last super chats, by the way? And I'm kidding, by the way. We got all the time. You guys, it's not. I was. Joking. Um, um, I think I did nine forty nine. Nine forty nine. Did you get JD with that fucking big ass dick drop? No, that's a that's a that's a fat one. I didn't God. I didn't suck that beautiful dick. No. Damn, JD. Fucking that's that's crazy, man. Thank you so much. Dude. We really Thank appreciate you, it. Uh, that's what's good, you beautiful fucking pricks. I want to stop in quick. I can't stay. Gonna catch the replay on the back crack. The crack <laughs> back. Uh, by the way, Michael looking good in the sleeveless, digging the gun show. Dude, this is more like a fucking Kentucky Fried Chicken show, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Michael looks like day. he works at Waffle House. What are you talking about? <laughs> <Yeah, I've been laughs> Holy fucking, shit. I just I want some, some grease on him. I had some donuts. I was like, hey, man, you want some fucking over easy? Uh, so what you want, omelets? I got it. I'm, I'm almost a full on 40 year old like mode. So I'm almost there. I almost made it. Um, some greasy. But no. Uh, still to this day, The Strangers is one of the uh, the scariest movies. Uh, piece, y'all. Yeah, we mentioned The Strangers. Like, I, yeah, I heard. Yeah, yeah. It got did. to you, or or did like? I, I enjoy The Strangers. I think it was entertaining. It's never really scared me, but I think that's just because I saw Funny Games first, and that's why Funny Games is so high on my list. Is once you <laughs> yeah, see that. <laughs> what? No, dude, I was just laughing at my own thing. You do look like a like a, a Waffle House, like a Waffle House chef. I, yeah. Like, yeah, it's like, I, I, like, I was like, yeah. if I came in for a job, I'm like, hey, man, I need a job. You're like, I, <laughs> I was like, you know how to make an omelet? I'm like, I'll show you how to make an omelet. Look at my sweat. Here we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do. I know. I get it. Uh, no, oh, um, yeah. This, well, no, this, um, for me, um, and I, and I said earlier, maybe on a psycho, uh, The Strangers never bothered me. I thought, I thought it was a great movie, but I, like, I don't know what it is, man. The Purge. The strangers, vacancy, that shit don't bother me. I don't know. I don't know what it, it just doesn't like uh, get me uh get me uh, going. 
Yeah, I think it's one of the, it either deeply gets to you or it doesn't for sure. But I do appreciate like the movie for itself. But hey, we really appreciate you, JD. Uh, that's fucking awesome, you Thank man. You, and I hope when you watch this back later, you have a good time. If not, uh, call your local congressman or Jay's dad. Uh, he will sort you out. And yeah, his name's Ron DeSantis. You can find him in Florida. <laughs> Uh, his name is Rhonda. <laughs> yeah, he's like hanging out with Elon Musk. No big deal. No big deal. He owns oh, Twitter. Fuck. Suck a dick. Uh, <laughs> White Atley. Hey, it's good to see you, buddy. He says, so sorry for being late. Love you guys, and I hope everything is okay. Hey, or everyone's doing okay. Good, man. Life is good, man. Life is life is great. Here hanging out, talking about movies, doing it for a living. Life's fucking awesome. God, oh, country, boy. and land. We have it all. Okay, thank you, Wyatt. Goddamn thing no matter what happens shan dog says from the twilight zone movie george miller's nightmare at thirty thousand feet with john licko there's something up there's there's something of the wing so oh yeah as a kid i was traumatized i only know about that that was weird yeah um no you never I, see that like that you know that episode was no i know what they're talking about but luckily for me, I never had to experience it because, like, I don't, I can't afford a fucking plane ticket. So I'm good. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm, like, I'm never going to be in that plane. situation, so I'm good. Dude, I literally watched Urban Legends two today, never seen it before, and they they did a bit on that. The guy was mm. fucking with some girl. He was like, you know, there's this movie, and she looks out, and she's like, <gasps> and there's nothing there. But to me, I'm like, plane rides are scary enough. Like, if I see a monster on the wing, honestly, not going to bother me. I'm just more, I'm more concerned yeah. with the goddamn pilot not crashing this fucking thing. Well, I, I think that what Babe Ruth, the whole fucking uh, plane thing, was Final Destination. Final Destination. So, yeah. yeah. So it doesn't That's what matter. I thought when, I, yeah. when I saw that scene in that movie, I thought the exact same thing. Trisha Thippa Doe says encounters of the fifth kind mess with my head um uh encounters of the fifth kind. uh scared the hell out of me got bad reviews but i found it terrifying the guy levitating with that grainy vhs image the spooky owls no thanks well, so she's talking about i haven't seen the sequel kind. so <laughs> <laughs> i yeah trisha i think you're talking about the fourth kind yeah it, it was yeah. a fucked up movie no we were talking about that earlier in the stream um, they definitely, uh, they did a, a really good job with the, the found footage and also making it seem like it was a, an actual real case, uh, yeah. uh you know, before you saw Mila Jovovich, <laughs> like walking out, really trying to prove it. Hi, my name's Greg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, Hi, I don't believe that shit. Yeah. Once Mila Jovovich walked out, I'm like, oh, okay. So now I know my wife's playing a prank on me. <laughs> that really did kill it. Like, my name is uh, Elizabeth Chartu. So, like, like, if Mila Jovovich had it. done that, I'd be like, man, if it had just been like, if it had been like, if it had been a, the, the, uh, if it had been an actress that was pretending to be the real person that Mila Jovovich was representing <laughs> right. in the movie, I'd be like, dude, that might be real. But the fact that Mila Jovovich walked out and was like, what you're about to, yeah, i'll be like shut the <laughs> fuck up lying, with your dude. paul anderson ass lips you're what? lying you're yeah. lying out of your ass go man. back to being <laughs> alice i don't want to hear your mouth <laughs> well no clearly it scared the hell out of me too it made my top 10 scariest movie of all time here's one more look at it you guys we're gonna fuck out of here uh those are our top 10 scariest movies of all time again not the best horror movies of all time i think it, I, I like it i like it if i, I if i were good. coming in as a viewer i'd be like that's a good fucking list. I like that list because it's different. I think we did fucking good, dude. I think we did a good job. I like I like what you did over there. I like I like the way you look right well, now. Well, the fact that we have the Exorcist as number one on both our lists, I think yeah. it's cool. Yeah, I like the way you dress yourself tonight. I like the Thank way you, you smell. Um, I put on. I'm mad that we're not in the same. I put on cologne room. for no reason. I'm like, I, I my wife was like, you, "Where are you going?" I'm like, "I'm going to the interwebs." They I know. Smell. I know you so well that I know exactly what you smell like right now. And it kind of makes curved. me hard, but curved. I can't do anything about it because we're so fucking far away. But by but, the way, I, we want to say thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight. Like, you guys have been yes. awesome. I did not expect you guys to be uh, so generous uh, tonight at all. And uh, huh. and also, tell me, uh, so attentive to our dumbass uh, list of things that made our wieners shrink up at night. Mm -hmm. uh, and not just the cold shower, just in general. Uh, I, I really did appreciate it, and it, it really is awesome of you guys, you folks, to come out and support us, and thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. I got nothing to add, brother. You said it fucking beautifully. Hey, yeah. but if you want some more of this shit, 
You want some more of this dirty fucking butt stuff? Uh, Saturday night burns redness on my face. I tasted you. You tasted me. You were never my taste. That's a great song. Uh, but the point is, Saturday night, Patreon live stream. There's a link below where you can join it. We're going to get fucking weird. Even weirder than you saw here tonight. You thought this was weird? Fucking dicks are going to come out. Not really. Yeah, and one day I'm going to work on the lighting so I don't look like I'm dying of polio. Uh, <laughs> I look like I'm a fucking moment. ghost. Just I look like I could be moment. in the fucking. Uh, I look like I could be in the Conjuring. <laughs> Just or like, the, I could be like no, I could be like in, in like in Insidious. <laughs> I could be one of those creatures that you take a picture of and they always easy get fix. closer to you. Like easy who's fix. that? Easy fix. I gotta uh, get. I, I, fuck this lighting. Look, 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 look at the modes. This. Look no. This. No. This. Let's turn it down a little bit. Oh, Ooh. that's fucking! You look like you're actually getting abducted look, as we're watching live on God. Oh, no, Jesus Christ! <laughs> the, uh, Dad, you can't do it. You, you can't, can't do it. it. You, can you can't do it. Do, hey, do that light. Do that one light one again. When you when you see your dad's dick for the first time. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, uh, no, this is like me night. looking at a girl without kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. uh we're playing music we're fucking chugging beers we're, we're doing horror trivia it's gonna be a great time saturday night 9 p.m it's in the patreon on the link below and not only that but when you sign into that you get like 50 other fucking live streams that we did doing the same shit before so hey but i also like I, but i also like the fact that we've put a legend down now we put we put some uh like it belongs uh, no you put some info to people are like <laughs> like next gen studio says keep my brother name out your fucking mouth <laughs> yeah keep his name out of your fucking mouth keep it out of your fucking mouth no, I, I like my that though i like that i like what? that some people are are dense <laughs> they think that was me. <laughs> hey but um, we did our job then we did our job we did our job we did a fucking job and hey you guys did too no reason no reason that we had like four three hundred fucking people what there was that i, I thought like, there was like only a hundred no, we had like 300, four people, Holy 400 shit. people at times. We only expect four. Uh, so cool. So awesome. Fucking love it. Appreciate every goddamn one of you. Uh, it's the best. Yeah. It's the fucking best. And you guys are the best. And we really do, uh, as Jay said, uh, feel thankful for all of you. Hope you guys have an amazing fucking night. And we'll see you guys soon. We'll see you real soon on Saturday. Let's... If you guys are champion no. enough to take the challenge, to take the leap, sign up for Patreon. What the fuck do are it. you waiting for? God I'll damn. Suck dick, man. Let's do it together. Yeah. We'll suck a crack Bye. dick. Crack ho dick. <laughs> We're going to go pee outside on our All neighbor's right. lawn. I got to go because my wiener's hurting. Bye. Bye, guys. Love you. Deep into the night. Long and hard.